Hello everyone! Welcome, welcome to this, our Wild Sea Adventure one-shot uh, by Fireflies Light. Thank you all so much for being here. Heckin' heckin' excited for this today! Uh, today we are playing a very special one-shot of the Wild Sea, and at any time uh, you need to be reminded, you can just put exclamation point Wild Sea right in the chat and you will be pulled directly to the Kickstarter. It is live right now for this very, very heckin' cool game. Um, this is, of course, our heart crew. Listen, we missed each other a lot and we had to come back and play more games, so uh, we're not sorry. And you're welcome, we're all here for more adventures. <laughs> um, so before we go around and say hi to everyone and hear a little bit more about what we're doing, I'm gonna do a really quick um, thank you, of course, to Roll20, who, uh, spotlights our stuff and has been so good to always um, highlight indie creators and indie shows and cool stuff like this. Uh, so thank you to Roll20. Don't forget, you can you can grab Roll20 and uh, check that out anytime. Play games with your friends online at a safe distance um, at any point in time. Don't forget to hit Wild Sea. Check out this Kickstarter. It's heckin' heckin' cool. There is a, um, a quick start guide you can grab right now for free. So go and do that, uh, grab it, bring it along uh, on this adventure and follow along with us if you want. Start start building yourself a character. Uh, we all did. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we, we play all games using safety tools. So that is something we always have going on uh, behind the scenes, sometimes in front of the scenes, uh, on screen, off screen. Uh, it's a good way, play all your games with safety tools, please and thank you. Um, and I think that's that's pretty much all of my, that's all my dish that I need to, that I need to do. Um, so that being said, thank you all so much for being here. I'm Jess, <laughs> this is my channel. You can find me at go underscore JG and all the places online. And today, today, <laughs> I've had this name planned for so long, y'all. I totally didn't just make it up. I am playing King Oyster, they, them pronouns, a gal, which is a little mushroom person, friends. A little teeny weeny mushroom person. Uh, I am a shankling and a dredger. And what that means is that I like both the tippy top highest heights of the trees and diving down into like the low depths to go find treasure. A little bit of both. Listen, really just expand your horizons and search the whole verdant green. Why not? <laughs> uh, so that's me. That's who I'm playing. Let's go around and say hi, hello to everyone. Tell us who you are, what you're doing, uh, who you're playing. Next up is Jordan. Uh, I actually get to play in this one, folks. So that's exciting. I want to say thanks to Ryan for uh, GMing for the GM. Um, I'm playing Humi, uh, Humi Fasa. Uh, he, they are an Ectus, a uh, big cactus, cactus person. Um, and they are a hacker. Uh, which is sort of, they're like the living machete, they think, that chops through the uh, the wild sea to help uh, hew the path for people. But um, they've got a, uh, a hobbyist's interest in um, treasure hunting and collecting things. So They think they're smart. And they might secretly be. <laughs> Love, 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 love it. Thank you so much. Excited, excited. Yeah, I love that it's the same crew, but we're switching, we're switching it up, y'all. We're switching it up. So excited. Um, so next up is Sam. Oh, hi. Hi, I'm Sam. And uh, you can find me at Sam on Damiel in a lot of places. And today I'm bringing you uh, Petricor, who I named five minutes ago. <laughs> and... I guess they use they them pronouns because I didn't think of that. I forgot the gender existed and that people need to refer to you by things. It's fine. Today I'm playing, uh, Petricor is an ardent, so looks like a person, but this is a, a far time from people of today. So who knows what a human looks like now? And, uh, they were born on ships, not on a spit of land or anything. No, only ship life. And their post on this ship is a hunter, which that part at least is self-explanatory. 
Amazing. Awesome. Next up is Sharon! Hey everyone, I'm Sharon. Uh, you can find me on Twitter with the username Chu underscore Baka. Uh, today, I am going to be playing a character whose name is, uh, who is, who calls themselves Temizora Syndicate 45, or Temzin for short. Uh, like they, them pronouns. Um, I was joking earlier that, you know, there's that picture of Miles Morales from the new Spider-Man game with a cat in his bag. This is like the worst version of that. Uh, Temzin is a Zelacre, which is basically a colony of spiders in a skin suit. Um, they are, their origin is their spitborn, which means they were born on like a little temporary island that arose on the trees of the wild sea and is now gone. Um, and their job on the ship, their post is a rattle hand, which is kind of like an engineer repair, repair person. Uh, they're also, they're, they're the worst version of Spider-Man in that they're, you know, like, they have, they have a little spectral cat in their bag and they're just a bag of spiders, but they're also the worst version in that they have no movement skills. You're gonna have to drag this sack everywhere. That's my character. Maybe well I could excited. wear you like a backpack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, Tamsin can be Humi's backpack. Perfect. Excellent. Awesome. And Ryan. I am Ryan. You can find me on Twitter at the one true K. And today I will be the Firefly, which is the Wild Seas GM figure, called as such because in the Wild Sea, Firefly light is incredibly important because of electricity and anything with potential sparks or fire is very, very dangerous. So Firefly lanterns often light the way for wild sailors. And so I'll be doing something kind of like that as we cut our own adventure in these waves. Uh, to give a little bit more background on the Wild Sea, it is a place where maybe three, 400 years ago, the world exploded with mega flora called the Verdant Sea. And it consumed the world and all of the oceans and bodies of water. And so now it's just a sea of trees. The old mountain peaks are now islands and people have pre-built. It is a soft apocalypse and a bright future. Life is difficult, but generally better for everybody. And now people take ships across the tops of these trees that grow back at incredible speed. So a tree that gets chopped up on the top will grow back in a matter of hours. And there's just lots to explore, lots to see. And it is a low magic, high weird world. And we are going to explore some of that today. So to start, our crew here is actually going to make their own ship. So part of being on a crew is that you have a ship and part of character creation is actually making the ship that you are all a part of. So as we go through this, give some thought to how you came to be on the ship, what your role might be on this ship, and uh, we'll go from there. So making a ship, you get six points to spend, or six stakes, plus three for every player, because you literally all have a stake in this ship. And we will start with the size. So if you're looking at the quick start guide, you can find this on page 50. And uh, yeah, so you can decide, discuss how big your ship is. I think we were saying on the smaller end, weren't we? Yeah, I think uh, before we went live, we talked about small or standard. I, if I had my druthers, I think, um, I think Humi would go for slow and steady. You know what I mean? And storage. Uh, if, if, you know, ideally we're going to be successful, so we're going to need a lot of space for all the things that we find. Um, 
and uh, you know, even though there's even though there's only four of us, having space for five to ten people means that we each get an office. You know, so it's pretty good. Or we don't have okay. to share a bathroom. <laughs> Whatever that looks like. For I mean, Cactus do you want to share a bathroom with a bag of spiders? I, I don't even know what that would be like. So. I, I do have a semi-spectral cat, so there's going to have to be a litter box somewhere on here. Oh, so. oh and I can see ghosts. Uh, oh! Yeah, you don't have to invite all of them on, on board. Um, <laughs> just because you can see them. Well, I can see the cat. I like it, yes. <laughs> oh, right, I see. Yeah. yeah, so I was thinking sort of like a big junk trawler, you know, as opposed to... A really sleek vessel. Um, is the compromise going to be a standard ship then? Like a standard I, ship but it feels spacious because we have a small crew? I think so. I'm good with standard. They both cost one stake so I, as, like, and, and then it just comes down to speed or armor. Yeah. And um, I'd rather just be able to take hits than move fast. So. Okay. All right. With your size chosen, you can choose your frame. So it's like the basic look of the ship. And each one of these costs one stake, and they give you a bonus to one of your ship's ratings. So with what we were talking about before, probably like either sturdy or molded. Um, would it be molded if we, like, oh, if we patched it up, found it, and repaired it? That's a good point. Yeah, oh, I it's... suppose we should back up and tell everyone like what we were talking about off stream about what we wanted for our ship. <laughs> yeah, so we were trying to decide um, if any one of us owned the ship. And what we decided was that Petricor living on a, a much larger ship was craving a little bit more space and freedom. Found a ship that uh, I don't want to say beached. Treed? <laughs> Branched. Yeah. <laughs> Branched, it, yeah. <laughs> crown. Nope. Yeah, you know. It, branched, I think, is a good phrase. I like that branched. had been branched and abandoned, and with this brave crew of wild sailors, uh, we all were able to repair it. Sorry, I forgot the word repair. We were able to repair it and thus, none of us singularly own the ship. It is a co-op. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with that in mind, since it's a patched up ship, it's not likely to be molded. Mm. Uh, I can imagine it being flexible in that case then. Maybe we're not yeah. fast, but we're maneuverable, and the uh, the um, because it's sort of been hacked together from a bunch of pieces over time, you know. Then we can shift things around or move oh. things as needed. Yeah, that's why it's multi-segmented because we've yeah, yeah. thrown together a lot of nice, nice, a lot of pieces. How's everyone feel about flexible? I dig, dig, I dig, dig that. Yeah, I like that. So a flexible frame will give you one more tilt, and tilt is the rating that um, it's your maneuverability on the sea. So how quickly you can turn, taking rough um, waves and whatnot. All right, so those, the size and the frame, you only get one of those. For hulls, bites, and engines, you must have at least one, but you can take more than one if you so choose. So I would say take one for now, and then if you want to go back and look at how many stakes you have left afterwards and decide if you want more. But let's take a look at your hull. I'm drawn immediately to Leviathan Bone. Oh gosh, I knew it. I knew you'd you know exactly where my heart li <laughs> lies. <laughs> because I definitely... As far as as far as um, whom he goes, collecting animal parts is definitely something he's interested in. Well, um, isn't Petricor also a Leviathan hunter? Oh, there Petricor you go. Yes. wants to bring down a Leviathan. 
I, that is one of their drives. I, I want to survive an encounter with a plant leviathan, so I'm in the same Ooh. boat. Um, I'm also interested in chitinous. Um, <gasps> chitinous. Oh, yes, chitinous. Sorry, as I chitinous. recently learned. I listened to that <laughs> podcast where you learned it. I was like listening being like, it's chitinous, it's chitinous. Okay, it's fine. We all know it now. <laughs> I'm so glad you did that first. It's a word I've only ever read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a glycoprotein that's used in a lot of structures, so it comes up in biology. <laughs> what are you thinking, Jess? Uh, no, I like that too. I like the Levi Leviathan bone. I think it suits a lot of things, like we discussed. Like, we, we're all like... Yeah, I like Leviathan bone. Solid, if a little morbid, describes us as a group, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what we have. Yeah, it definitely beefs our armor up, so we're going to be able to take some hits. Trying to get away from trouble. Yes, indeed. As we continue, give some thought to what kind of Leviathan the bone might be from, or if it's from several Leviathans cobbled together. Mm -hmm. Give some thought to that as we uh, look through the other options. So the next option is your bites, which is literally how your and how your ship pulls itself through the leaves. Uh, the most common bite on the Wild Sea is the long jaw, which is just like basically a giant chainsaw that turns its way through the leaves. But there are many options, so take the one that suits you most. Uh... Hmm. Mulcher is terrifying. I yeah. I was just looking at the mulcher <laughs> and I was like, oh boy, that's although it's make, so interesting. It's so it's weird, but also thinking that if we combine it with our Leviathan bone and have it be have it it's be like, a bunch of salvaged Leviathan teeth and teeth? and and things. Yeah, that, okay. Yeah, the description for mulcher is grinding teeth in a lamprey style mouth. And yeah. you know, this is the heart crew. We have to go with the teeth. Right? Teeth. <laughs> I, I, this isn't heart. We could we could leave the teeth oh, behind. We, we but could are the teeth that. in our souls? <laughs> Should we? <laughs> the teeth burrowed into us. You know, it's. Just, <laughs> um, I also really like the grappling array. The imagery of the grappling array, where basically it's not a boat at all, and we're just dragging ourselves across the. We're just shooting out grappling hooks and just like kind of like prop pulling our way along. Okay, I also like the underscales. Thousands of flexing scales that worm the ship forward with mm -hmm. a sinuous motion. That, that was yeah. gonna be my vote, yeah. I can see I, that blending well with the Leviathan bone stuff too, where we're like- And like we're, we're segmented anyway. <gasps> yeah, you're yes. flexible friends. Like some sort of strange fish. Oh man! Maybe well, each... like an eel, like a yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. each 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 room is like a like a uh, what are you? What's your back made out of the bones in your back? They're uh, vertebrae. 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 Yeah. Vertebrae, yes, maybe each one's like a vertebrae that, and we can kind of like rearrange them as needed. So everything's in one long kind of like noodle uh you know it's like, like a train, train but a ship yeah, <laughs> yeah. sorry i i really wasn't thinking of that I, I, we, we don't have to it hasn't have to be a train no, but, but it, was, uh, yeah. it was in your heart it was yeah. i was gonna ask if folks have ever been in either like the new this is so toronto of me and i apologize but the new <laughs> subway system is like completely open all the way down like there's no carts like it's oh really it's yeah, amazing. We were supposed to be getting those in New York. We got them all. We stole them from you now. <laughs> Budgets. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand it's like, how that's um, possible. The MRT in Taipei or the MTR. Yeah, like, no, Open Gangway is so cool. It's so cool. And so, like, I'm just imagining, like, or if you've been, have you ever been in, like, a not a double decker bus, but a two part bus where the center is, like, a circle and it mm -hmm. kind of, like, yeah. you can sit in the circle center and it, like. It's my favorite place to sit. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I'm imagining, like, maybe, like, that or, like, or, like, the open subway system if anyone has ever been <laughs> in one of those. And it's, like, like each part is a piece, but it's also combined, but also it's uniquely jointed. Like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm into, into this. It. I'm really into that. That's cool. So under scales, under scales. Yeah. 
one long, long ship boy that wiggles across the wild sea. Our noodle, our big yeah. noodle, made from bones. Maybe that's why someone just left it there. Like, ah, <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> it's too they weird for me. <laughs> they were like, "This isn't the ship. This is a nightmare." <laughs> oh, no but pass. then when we land, we can like be all coiled up to take up less space. Okay, mm-hmm, all right, mm-hmm. I'm into this. And your underscales give you one. Saws and one stealth. So saws is your ability to cut through the waves themselves. So if you're hitting particularly dense growth or something like that, your saws are going to be what get you through. Nice. And we could always swing back and get mulcher too. Yeah. Because it, it does fit the uh, the eel vibe that we're going. If we with, have so. left over, we can come yeah. and eat some things. Oh, big yikes! Okay. Then, I like it. Next is your engine, which is your engine. It what powers your bites. I saw I saw bees. I did. I was just looking at bees. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it. But... You were you were just saying we weren't allowed to have teeth because we were stepping away from the heart, and now okay, okay, you want to okay. go back to bees. I didn't say that, but okay, I can step back from bees. We can do <laughs> explosions. <laughs> We haven't stepped back from teeth. We've put teeth on the back burner in favor <laughs> of being more like an eel. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I get you, I get you, I get you, I get you, I get you. All right. Oh, but I do think solar compressor is pretty cool and kind of leans into like the solar punk. Ooh, I like the idea that we have to like almost crest every once in a while to like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, especially because it's segmented with so many legs that it actually, like, kind of, like, did, 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 like, climbs up and, like, over like the, to, like, yeah, the yeah. top of crowns. Like those old-timey uh, sea serpent things you yeah. would see on yeah. map. Oh, I was going to say exactly like a centipede. Oh. And it, <laughs> yeah. And then it takes naps in the sun along with the ghost cat. <laughs> Excellent. I really like it. Here we go. Solar I like as we, as we crest, the, there's panels on the top that flip just as we're cresting oh, that yeah. absorb it and then they flip back down as we go down so there's just kind of this ripple of of uh that would be really yeah like a ripple of like the black solar panels yeah exactly they they just sort of twist uh, like flip as we go up and then they they turn back down again all right yeah. so you've got your solar compressor which gives you plus one to speed and stealth which are pretty self-explanatory so right now you have four armor, one seals, two speed, two saws, three stealth, and two tilt. And seals is the rating that determines how well the ship is at keeping the wild sea out, which is an important thing because the wild sea is full of this chemical, or I guess a family of chemicals called creserin, which is known for causing uh, burns, mutations, and hallucinations. So... That is one of the main dangers of... That's why people just don't go swimming across the sea. It's like fantasy phenol, then. Like, you touch it, bad things happen. Yeah. Okay. I assume. I don't really know what phenol is, but (laughs) you said it with such confidence. It's bad news. Don't (laughs) lick it. (laughs) Okay. Gotcha. I mean, that's generally one of my basic, you know, if I don't know what it is, don't lick it is a pretty good life <laughs> lesson rule thing. That, like, that's like the chemistry joke is like never lick the spoon. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's fair okay. though. So you have all of the necessary parts of your ship. The next part are fittings and your undercrew. So you have 10 more uh, stakes to spend on these things. So fittings would be just extra bits to your ship. You could have special rooms, um, defense systems, and your undercrew are other, um, we'll go with entities on the ship. I think that's probably the most appropriate word. Uh, There's no right or wrong choice. Most rooms will give you a bonus if you're taking advantage of the room while you're trying to do something. Um, additions will just give you extra tools that you can make useful as as you see fit. I think we have to decide, since we've only got 10 left, about whether or not we're getting the octopus. Because that'll dictate how much we have to spend on everything else. So 
Don't make me choose. Someone else choose. <laughs> the octopus is really cool, but I really want the squirrels. If we get the octopus and the squirrels, and we have only two more left to spend on everything else. Yeah, and then we can't go back to get the teeth. So I guess the question is, do we want teeth or do we want an octopus, Jordan? Well, there's also all kinds of excellent things here. Um, the Wrecker's Magnet it interests me because then we can like pull in salvage. Yeah. And, um, King Oyster, Humi, and Temzin are all like salvage scavenger types, right? Yeah. So Honestly, so is Petrichor. Okay. Uh, yeah. a, a workshop would be useful. Yeah. Um, the underthrush platform. Ooh. Sounds really cool. Really good. And then, are we are 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 we heavily armed, or is that not our bag? It's definitely not Tamsin's bag. Um, Petricor... out of all the bags, that's not Tamsin's. <laughs> <laughs> Petricor is more of a I'm gonna shoot you with my bow from a hiding position. Yeah. So yeah. I think um I think if we pick anything, I would vote for something real clunky like the shrapnel clunk cannon, which is really probably not an actual weapon. It's just something that we rigged up for the rare time <laughs> when we need to do Oh look, it's a pirate. Yeah, and we probably we probably just I, I mean I imagine it's just like using it as our trash. We just like launch what we don't need into the into the woods. <laughs> We just keep it in case, like, we come sure. across like an enemy vessel, and it's like, all right. Yeah, we were. Some we of were, this has been sitting for a while. Yeah, we used to we used to launch it into the woods, and then we realized we could point it at somebody in a pinch, and then it's where all the spectral cat turds go. That's right. <laughs> I know that says metal specifically, but it's a lot of kitty litter. Yeah. You often see Humi walking, holding a bag that no one can see. And they're just like <laughs> loading it into the cannon. Whoa. Insult to injury. Um, oh, well, cause okay, because we went with Leviathan Banes that gives us armor, and then both our bite and our engine are speed and stealth. So I don't think we need to do a lot of like like we have the armor as a backup, and then we have the speed and stealth if we wanna like so I don't think we need if we don't want to do any heads on, like it depends. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do like, I've, I'm attached to this cannon now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to help. I was trying to, I, I really, I was I'm trying to make now. room for squirrels and octopus. And octopus. <laughs> but now we mentioned we could just shoot cat litter <laughs> at our enemies. Invisible cat litter that they won't see coming. I think um, that's that only Petricor can see. <laughs> yeah. Um there's also the winch claws, which could be have a practical use. They've got their grappling claws. So we, you know, we could be grabbing things that aren't other ships to fight. I'm just trying to think if we would have something that we accidentally discovered we could use in a pinch, you know. Nothing so uh um well, look, if we get the squirrels, then we don't need the shrapnel cannon because we'll have squirrels. Oh, that is fair. The squirrels have, they, the ammunition is still useful. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we can just give them the cat turns. Yeah. Can we, uh, The for anyone uh, at home, if you haven't, go and get this free uh, quick start guide right now. But the squirrels are tiny but ferocious. Yeah. And they've got miniature slingshots. So, perfect size for turns. Yep. yep. <laughs> my God. Oh my God. All right. Well, I'm sorry uh, for the bathroom humor, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> we are. We can skip. We can skip armaments for now. Um, okay, but we do want the wreckers magnet and the uh, the workshop, correct? Yeah, I think those. I think those fit all of our mo's pretty well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wreckers magnet and the workshop. And I, I wouldn't hate the navigation suite uh, as the treasure hunter vibe. Um, and also, all of us standing over a big map is is cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. we can we can hang on that. 
All right, so we're definitely taking the squirrel flingers for a pack of, for our undercrew. Okay. They're they're gonna defend us and be cute at the same time. They, <laughs> they are um, a good investment. <laughs> they I they love can them. deal blunt, keen, or spike damage. I, I assume that depends on like what uh, ammunition on the type we of give trash, them. Yeah. On the type of trash that we give them to throw. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Nice. Honestly, if you're shooting turds, you might be able to do toxin damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um That's many... good flavor. <laughs> no. no. Quite the opposite, actually. <laughs> it's very strong flavor. That's for sure. <laughs> oh god. Uh, <laughs> How many so, uh, how, how many stakes do we have left? Yeah, what do we, we have, have left? You have six stakes left. Octopus. So that's with the the magnet, the workshop, yep. the map, the squirrels, and the, the map squirrels. and the squirrels. Did we take the map? We didn't Navigate. do the the navigation suite. That would take okay. us down to five. Okay. So Jordan, you can either have your octopus. No, or I don't the map. think the, I, <laughs> I love the octopus, but I'd rather have some more. It also it's it looks like these undercrew provide us with tracks. Do they work in the same way as hit points for the ship, or is it more? It's um, well, not when hit points, yeah. yeah, it becomes a part of the ship, and when things happen to the ship. Uh, the tracks can uh, be marked. If the squirrel track is filled, they will not be able to help you out anymore. It doesn't mean they're dead, but they're not able to help out. Okay. Well, what's everyone think? I feel like I'm talking a lot, so I want to hear what everyone else has to say. Well, if we don't get the octopus, we could get the teeth. Yeah. Yeah. The teeth. And we can get, you wanted the under thrush platform too, right? It just kind of seemed cool, cool that we could drop down. I, yeah, I really like, like, I didn't want to say, because I, I thought we were getting the octopus, but if we can have, I really like the idea of jumping out the butt, like, like opening up a, a thing in the bottom and just being like, what? Like, yeah. Below the waves, jump dropped like. out the back end of the of the the eel. Um, I yeah, also want... kind of want the firefly lanterns, but that is purely from like an Instagram like string of yeah. aesthetic <laughs> perspective. I, I mean, we can afford all this stuff, right? You can, if we, yeah. If we take the mulcher, that's two off of our six. That leaves us four. So we could do navigation suite under thrush platform. And the firefly lanterns, and then we'd have one left. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, we already have the workshop in our math, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So are you, is that what you're thinking then? Yes. And then we have one more. Right. So mulcher. Which the mulcher gives you what? plus two to saws. Sauce, sauce, Do you sauce, often sauce, have sauce, multiple sauce. bites? Is that very common? Uh, often enough, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, you said the navigational suite. Mm -hmm. Similar, where sh you know sailing ships would have the sails, but then also yep. be able to deploy the oars to mm. move along. So. I I just love the idea that, like, because we have the underscales and the mulcher, we make a very strange motion as we <laughs> through the wild sea. Kind of like a sandworm, um, but up in the, we're a leaf worm. Yeah. You said the yes. under thrash, under uh, thrash platform? Plat yeah, under thrash platform. Do we want a galley? I feel like we'd all want to hang out and eat our weird meals together. I do cook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was thinking about for the last one either the rig ropes or survival station. Where are those? Additions. Yeah. Additions, thank you. Rig ropes. The rig ropes looks handy. Also, it's a place to hang our laundry. <laughs> 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 Which that imagery is hilarious as we're 
plowing through the game. And That's right. You said you're station. taking the, the Firefly Lanterns as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're just yes, deciding yeah. on our last stake, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We have one last point. Um, so survival station contains flares, flags, grapples, wraps, and emergency rations. Could be handy. Yeah. Like, those are both pretty handy. I like the idea of rig ropes, I think, between okay. the two. I think I like the rig ropes, too. And, I mean, narratively, we can have, like, a little cramps galley. Yeah, it's just... We probably just eat in whatever space... We eat in the we navigation. We, we eat over our work, like, good money. <laughs> <laughs> the maps are all covered in food marks. Sometimes <laughs> we all just stand in the same segment. Post millennials, I guess. Yep. <laughs> We're like, wait, is that a point we need to go to on the map, or is that a noodle? Oh, no, 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 that's coffee, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. I think, I think we're set. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Hey, yeah. The most difficult part. No. What's the name of your ship? Oh, Yikes. no! <laughs> How could you do that to us? <laughs> uh, I have a proposal uh, from one of my favorite poems from one of my favorite uh, poets, um, Shel Silverstein. He has a poem called, I'm, we've been swallowed by the quick digesting gink, and now we're dodging his teeth, and now we're resting in its intestine, and now we're back out on the street. And it's like, you know, <laughs> we go along, swallow things up, throw stuff out the back we don't like. So maybe the gink. The that's gink my, works. That's, my proposal that's better there. than tree cucumber, which was what I was going to suggest. Wriggly <laughs> <laughs> like toothy tree cu cu cucumber monster, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You uh, could also add, like, some kind of adjective before gink, sure. if you wanted. The bone yeah. gink. Ooh. Bone gink. <laughs> Vertebral gink. Uh, chat has suggested SS teeth, teeth, teeth. <laughs> mm -hmm. That should Thanks, just be Alex. like us as a part, like an RPG group, our yeah. name. <laughs> we are the SS teeth, <laughs> teeth, teeth. <laughs> teeth. Yeah. It was us all along. Uh, the gink ma, the, the, the gink tooth. Or something else. Tree cucumber is still on the table. <laughs> I'm not against tree cucumber. Gink colon tree cucumber. <laughs> like <laughs> like it's a like it's an action movie name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, the tree cucumber, the ginkening. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Brian, you said there'll be a list of names in the book. So yes, that this doesn't happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this doesn't happen. Uh, tree cucumber. I think like, like chat seems to like that. Gink can be the short name, like our <laughs> our our little nickname for the boat, but it's not what's it's not what paint it's not what is painted on the side. Yeah. I guess Sounds we good. do have enough room to write tree cucumber. <laughs> we do. Yeah. Several times in large font. We could put along. one letter per segment. I was literally going to say, what if it's segmented <laughs> into sections so it always appears to say something different? Like, yeah, depending we can really on like. Them to, yeah. Oh, look, there goes the QQ. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the QQ now. <laughs> We have a variety of nicknames for our ship, as any true native. Does. <laughs> oh my god! Q -Q, I love it. I love the QQ. <laughs> I mean, maybe it was the tree cucumber, but the pieces that had the tree and the like, mber have just been replaced and fallen <laughs> off. So all that's left is QQ. QQ. <laughs> These are I'm, the I'm adventures of the starship <laughs> QQ. <laughs> 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 uh, let's go with the QQ. I like the, the story of that. We only had enough Scrabble pieces to write that. <laughs> yeah, if, if that's what you want, let's do it. I love it. Okay. Then, 
how did all of you come to be on this ship? Well, I guess you said that, that Petrichor wanted to find a new ship and you all got together to help them rebuild it? Yeah, this was like 100% salvaged. Yeah, okay. it was kind of like one of those looking for group things, like looking for a group. <laughs> you want to help me patch up the ship? <laughs> we, had yeah. the, we had the party finder up yeah. on our HUD. <laughs> There's a meme of Petrichor holding up her hands, and there's all the bones, like as the butterfly, and you know, and then at the bottom it says, "Is this, is a, this ship? a ship?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I want that meme now. Someone please and, meme it. Yeah, the rest of us are just like, could be, could be, could be a ship, could be and a now ship. We're friends. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. What is it like? Something calls everybody to the wave. What is it that called you? Like, yes, you have the ship, but what is it you, that you do? It doesn't have to be for money. It's just like, what keeps you going out there despite the danger and whatnot? The family business, hunting things, saving people. <laughs> <laughs> finding, finding, you know, right of salvage loot along the way. Making money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lots of <laughs> lots of salvage and crafting. Yeah. Also, I like to eat things. I mean, I want to try new and exotic foodstuffs. So King Oyster and I are uh, culinary buddies. This is we true. have two gourmets upon this vessel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how. I eat things, but I'm very excited. <laughs> you just to stick try your new... mushroom hands in them for a while. Yeah, I was just... thinking the same thing. I literally think I climb on top of okay. <laughs> King Oyster <laughs> is very small. <laughs> King Oyster is often like like it's that sort of like um trope. Because King Oyster and Humi uh, have been adventuring together, treasure hunting a long time, and it's the sort of thing where you see Humi, this big, this big cactus man, and then just little tiny King Oyster pops out. <laughs> it's just like, hey. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think like King Oyster literally climbs on top of like the the, the galley table. We don't have a galley <laughs> on top of the <laughs> table. On the map table. <laughs> on top of the map table and like just sticks their fingers oh. in everything. King, King Oyster, wait, do you uh does King Oyster have like feet small enough to like fit on one normal dinner plate? Because that's what's yeah. gonna happen. Just smear uh um, Tencent is just going to smear food on the plate, put it there, yeah. and then you're going to stop the stuff. And we'll plant you in it. Basically. Get a step in it. Just like, <laughs> da, 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 da. oh, yeah, this is good. <laughs> King, King Oyster, you're digesting this charts. You're, please, the charts. Oh, 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 sorry. I, uh, yeah, this, oh, well, I mean, they, they are aged well. These are some well aged <laughs> maps you got here. I really like these. It's, you know, just just a little. You know what? You don't need this corner. Rip, take it away. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't that wasn't pertinent information. Yeah, that was just a jam stain from two months ago. Or yeah. okay. oh. <laughs> uh, you know what? Just because of all this, I'm gonna put a, one of you take an extra chart, and it's just gonna be called a food stained chart. Someone claim it. I think I think it has to be King Oyster because King Oyster is okay. standing on the table <laughs> eating. I literally already have mushroom <laughs> footprints. <laughs> what is it? A, a food stained chart? chart. Yeah. Okay, got it. <laughs> Before we even start, just have some extra stuff. Sweet, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. So charts are generally used to. Um, they're good trading goods on the sea because the sea is constantly shifting. So an up-to-date chart is actually extremely valuable for anybody who spends time on the waves. You can think of your resources in general as like they easy come, easy go. Like you use them, you'll get more easily. Your aspects are permanent parts of your character sheet unless you don't want them to be there basically. So a chart in this case, like if you were looking for like an Iron Chef style competition somewhere on the Wild Sea. You might say, oh, I've got this food stain chart. It's like, oh yeah, so your journey there won't be as long or difficult because you've got this chart that tells you all about it. Neat. So 
for a lot of the resources, it's use them as you see fit, use the name as a prompt and color it how you'd like. But I think if we're good, we can get into the adventure proper. Yeah, let's do some adventuring. Okay. The sun is setting and you have been at sea for several days now. The sun is almost making you, it's almost making it look like the world's on fire, which is typically terrifying, but today it's beautiful. Or at least it would be if that ship behind you with the crimson sails wasn't chasing you. They have been gaining for the last day or so, and you know that in the next short period of time, they will overtake you. And those crimson sails are something that you have learned that you should maybe not have crossed. However, a few days ago, you were in Kithuna, a mycosanctum, which is like a Gao settlement that is on the inside of a tall shank. A tall shank is a, a massive tree that stands above even the trees of the wild sea and are several miles high and people use them as homes. Shanklings are from tall shanks. Kithuna, interestingly, is built on the inside of a tall shank where this mycosanctum, they, they use the inside to spore and grow more mushrooms. And it was in this mycosanctum where you had a run-in with some of these sailors. Uh, what happened? So before we get there, I want all of you to tell me one very striking feature about Kithuna. It's, it may or may not have been your first time here, but this is probably a more unfamiliar part of the Wild Sea for you. And upon entering or spending some time in Kithuna, there's, there are all these interesting sights and smells and sounds. What's something that struck your character as remarkable? Do we want to start with uh, Humi? What surprise or caught Humi? Um, so this is a Gao colony and in, sort of inside and on a tree. Yeah. The, the shanks, are they often like you're inside the tree or is it just mostly along the branches and outside? Usually they're on the outside, but in this case it's inside because it's right. humid right. and warm and is a great place for mushrooms to grow. Um, there is a strange interior rain from all the moisture. It's not really rain, but it's from just all of the moisture dripping down and falling. And, uh, it's absolutely fine with the gal because they want to absorb, you know, they're fine with absorbing the moisture, but there are some gal that have grown these umbrella like appendages that you can kind of basically hire as an escort. Um, so there are periodically people who are not so interested in getting soggy walking alongside Gao that have these, they just have these, yeah, these big mushroom umbrellas that will keep you uh, from getting the worst of the worst of the moisture rain. Okay, I love it. Uh, Petricor, what's something that struck you as you came into this mycosanctum? Um, I think one of the cool things about this particular mycosanctum is that there are like fungal threads connecting the dwellings so you can communicate like long distances in this dwelling without um, needing to walk over or shout or anything. Without electricity, just you vibrate the threads and just fungus. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cool, but also gives the place like a a whispering, like a like a whispering quality from all of these vibrations 
Mm. So not only is it like lightly misting, it's also just like a. You can just hear the vibrations on like the edge of your earring. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. And Temsin, what struck okay. you about the Micro Sanctum? Um, I was going to say, uh, so like through all of the hyphae, like the little threads that um, the fungal growths grow into the tree branch, you can, uh, the way that they r vibrate and shake the tree in very minuscule amounts when information is passed, like, um, Tamsin can feel that, like very small vibration pass under their feet whenever there's like a whisper of a message sent through. Yeah, because you have tremor sense, correct? Yes. So tremor sense is an ability that allows Temsin to uh, feel even the smallest vibrations in the air and ground around you. All right, and King Oyster, what struck our excitable little gal? Uh, so, because you described this like uh, this shank, like the tall shanks that goes like up, but um, there's a lot of uh, <laughs> all these all these fun guys love <laughs> living inside the shank. It's kind of hollowed, and there's like almost like stepped um, stepped f fungal growths that like move up kind of in a circular pattern. But also because it goes up and then it's open. At the top, there's a time of day when we, like, we're coming in, this is our first time here, and there's a time of day where everyone just, like, went inside their homes, and we're like, what the heck? And that's the time when the sun comes directly over the hole, and just, like, beams down, and it's so heckin' bright, like, everyone just goes inside, because they're so used to it kind of being, like, dark inside this tall shank. Um, and I was also imagining that kind of the underside of all these uh, fungi is actually kind of like bioluminescent so that there's a little bit of light all the time. Um, and then like it almost kind of like dims until it's time for the sun to like do its thing. And then they like after it crosses, they like rebrighten again afterwards. So Yeah, you're you're in this place with these um, umbrella mushroom uh, escorts and these fine filament like threads crisscrossing across it, which uh, Tempson can feel the vibrations of, and these bioluminescent walkways and paths that get a big hit of the sun right in the middle of the day. You came into this place just before that big moment of sun, which only lasts for a few minutes, I imagine or the, the most extreme part only lasts for a few minutes. And you've seen that there is some kind of like, um, almost like a festival happening on one of the lower platforms. There are people out, there are food stalls. You can already get the scent of like grilled foods uh, as you come in, grilled on these chemical burners as opposed to flame, because again, flame in a place that where everything is wood and branches, Hmm, not great. But there is, and there's, um, you can hear music with these interesting instruments that maybe you've not even seen before. But you had a run-in with these, uh, these sailors somewhere in that crowd. So what do you think might have happened with your particular crew and your uh, own uh, eccentricities? feel like our communication skills aren't so great. I'm... Or maybe projecting. <laughs> hmm. I mean, I have zero social skills, so... Yeah, I just... <laughs> the benefit of having this party sheet is that I can just go look at everybody like, huh, hmm, maybe... All I have is some negotiation skills. I have a, a touch of charm and a touch of negotiate. 
I mean, I have a little bit of outwit, but I think it would be very probable that we would misstep at some point. Maybe we, maybe we beat them to the punch on something. Like there was a opportunity to get some information, and we got it before they did. Mm. And they're fellow fellow scrappers that are less scrupulous than us. Oh, that that would make sense. What does everyone think? So in all of this hustle and bustle, there is the a tent for the rumor monger. And that is the place where wild sailors will go to give and receive information in exchange for other goods and services. And there was a a tall gal, very um, lithe, saying, well, I can't part for it for such a low price, but this is a particularly nice piece of information I've got here. Well, what say you? And they're speaking to somebody wearing a, a crimson scarf. So We're saying, kind of hanging back and watching this happen? Yeah. Mm. You said you beat them to the punch? Yeah. I so tried. what is it that one of you do to interrupt this dealing? Uh, I think Humi would just nudge Petrichor with uh, their big metal arm and say, talk. Great. I love it. <laughs> I think I think the nudge is meant to be a little nudge, but since this place is very damp, mm. uh, Petrichor slips. <laughs> right. And kind of like just hip checks this person out of the way. In struggling to like regain balance, right? Mm -hmm. Just like boop. Yeah, you hit this person. They're like a, a stocky, ardent, um, like very barrel chested. Like they are sturdy. Oh, and I am not imagining ardent to be very stocky at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one happens to be through some miraculous, <laughs> uh, <laughs> miraculous I love uh, genetics. They are stocky and they just give you a look. Well, are you going to apologize? Look, it's, it's very... I love your mustache. It's fantastic. My mustache, you say. And how is that supposed to make up for the fact that you've now interrupted my dealings with this person? Well, I'm sorry. Let me... Let me let you get back to your dealings and I'll just wait my turn. Then I'm going to wriggle up with my uh, yeah. staccato non-vertebrate arms and I'll be like, what seems to be the problem here? Maybe I can help smooth things over. Um, Petricor, did you want to do a quick charm roll before? Yeah, before so... I mess it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there an, an edge attached to these skills? Nope. It's all in how you color it, really. Yike. I'm not very... Hold on. I gotta go back to where these are explained in detail so I can so figure this out. Grace is usually like... It's kind of a physical grace. Yeah. Instinct is running off of your instincts. And tithe is really like information and um, things relating to the sea itself. Yeah, not what I got. So I guess instinct is is the best option here. I'm just going mm -hmm. yeah. by the seat of my pants as one yeah. does. So instinct will give you one d6. All all rolls consist of one edge, one skill or language, and then other advantages that you may have, which are typically in aspects and other fictional positioning things. So you get 1d6 for your instinct. Okay, and then 1d6 for my charm. Yep. And this... if you feel like 
you have something like an asset that would help you. Yeah, I don't think I I don't think I do. I don't think people count as animals. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> so once you're old two D six. Oh and yikes. And you're gonna read the highest result. So a six is a triumph, a four or five is a conflict, and a one, two, or three is a disaster. So I rolled two dice. The lowest one is a one. Okay. The highest right. one is a three. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> so a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we know how it happened. <laughs> Found it. And so this guy comes up to you and even though he is much shorter than you, he still uh, has a presence about him. Oh, I think you're going to have to do better than that. Much better than that. And is getting all up in your face. And I think this is when uh, Tempson. What seems to be the problem <laughs> here? This at this point, I think I would probably yours. look over at Oyster just as this is about to start and say, I think, um, I think this is going to end badly. I mean, this looks, like, this looks like every social situation I've ever seen them get into. <laughs> put like one <laughs> wriggly hand on on uh, the Ardent's shoulder. I'm sure that whatever Petrichor did is easily smoothed over. And I think this is where the disaster really comes in. Putting that arm on the yeah. Ardent is not well received and just a quick hand goes and grabs it and holds it really tight. A surprising grip from this guy. And I think uh, King Oyster, you probably noticed that this stocky guy is not the only one wearing this crimson scarf. And mm -hmm. in fact, there mm -hmm. are other people wearing similar garb around. Mm -hmm. And they have caught notice of what's going on over here. And mm -hmm. they don't look happy at all. They're coming on this moment. Uh intervention time her squashing my hand <laughs> uh is this is this is this is this ad, ad, exit time are we exiting i'm looking around <laughs> like do we do we want uh out we, of this what are we thinking we need uh, we need the chart or... uh i have a question then actually i was gonna ask this to you ryan yeah. the person selling the chart to the art the ardent Mm -hmm. is like human type for anyone like listening in and then what is the person actually are they from here are they gal since this yes, is a gal community gal. yeah okay then i want to do a thing <laughs> all right what's your thing well i'm obviously resting like i was obviously <laughs> sitting on yumi <laughs> yeah yumi's, yumi's mechanical arm actually has a little oh like, a little like seat cushion yeah perch. there's like a little oh. perch that uh, is comfortable I love it. wait no like a little planter that's right. Yeah, it's just got a little. Sorry. It's got a little bit of dirt and stuff, so that um, yeah. So like, yeah, I'm a poke out. <laughs> I'm a I'm a poke out, and then I'm a look directly at the other the gal shop person, and then mm -hmm. I'm a puff a bunch of spores out, and I'm gonna talk gaudum to them, which is com completely done through spores, so no one would hear it. <laughs> um, so it's a chemical language. Um, it's got several, t uh, okay. So there's, there is some noise. Um, so there's some, like, I start clicking, I guess. Oh, I was going to say, like, if you're like puffing spores out, does it sound like a fart? But I'm sorry. It can be clicking. <laughs> you, you are in such a mood today. I'm sorry. I need um, to calm down. No, I think it I sounds rather than like rather than like a regular. Fart, it sounds like a wheeze. It's like <laughs> meow, like a balloon oh, like, deflating. Like a... <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I like start a sad to deflate. Pipe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> because yeah because bad stuff is happening, but also Humi told me we need the chart. So while this fight seems to be breaking out, <laughs> I'm just messaging them like. <laughs> Like, okay. hey, 
So let's uh, get let's put together your roll. Okay. So, so your edge. Uh huh. Uh, I was thinking either tide or instinct because you said tide is kind of the language, uh, but instinct is also like I'm gao speaking gaoling, like if that so, makes sense. So uh, tides is more um, things about the sea itself. Okay. Uh, what? Ab- but go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say, what about? Um, hang on, I was looking for the thing. What about? Veils is an edge of shadow uh, ciphers and secrecy. So maybe yeah. a veil, because I'm like yeah. kind of trying to Absolutely. be sneaky and like send this secret cipher language to the other gal. Definitely. Okay, so then I will use. So you use... get one edge. Yep. You got your veils. Okay, got it. Um, and then... What skill or language are you gonna use? Uh, Gaudum. I only have yeah. one point in that though. So in, so the rankings for languages. One uh-huh. means you have a smattering of it. You've got like some common phrases and whatnot. Two is kind of conversational, and three is fluent. But what's really cool oh. is that languages are an actual skill, so you get to roll Gaudum as a skill. So yeah. that'll give you another d6. And then you had said you let off your spore sacks to kind of create a bit of cover, right? Yeah, I do have spore sacks, which is an aspect I have as, as a gal yeah. that um, obscures an area in spores. So if you've used that to like, create more cover, like create a distraction, that yeah. would be another d6 as uh, part of your advantage. Okay, sweet. Good, good, good. So, yeah. I'm going to use this one, this dice that has a speckling in it like spores. <laughs> um, and then that's it, right? Or do I have anything else? Uh, I think that's it. Okay. So okay. you're looking for the highest number, and if you rolled any doubles at all. Okay. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> I I rolled a one and two threes, so I don't know if that gives so, me. It. So it's a disaster, but it's with a twist. So <laughs> cool, anytime cool, there cool. there are at least. One set of doubles in your result, you get a twist. A twist is not, not necessarily good or bad, but it's like a little like shift in the positioning of the scene. So you can get a little bonus here. Um, the final twist is up to you, though. So okay. it's so and it's open to the entire table. So if you have any idea of like one little thing that could happen, like a twist, often like if all else fails you can get a resource of some kind, but a twist could also be like, oh, this little thing is happening over here. Um, so my immediate thought was that the the ardent that we're about to fight with is allergic to these spores. <laughs> <gasps> that is a perfect twist. <laughs> that is so good. That is amazing. So just sneezing and wheezing. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, I, I should be better. I, I need to practice my Gautam more. No one on the ship speaks Gautam. How am I supposed to practice my language? <laughs> I like I probably said something offensive. <laughs> like <laughs> all of this nonsense provide an opening for me to just because obviously so. this Gao is gonna Well, I don't know. What does the what is the Gao's reaction to the uh, allergic reaction? Well, yeah, here's the thing, right? A one to three isn't a failure. It's a disaster. Yeah. Right? Like, there's no failure in the Wild Sea. There's conflicts and disasters. And this disaster is something about what you said or the way you said it. And seeing this, this moment coming, the rumor monger says something in Gautam that you cannot understand because it's fast and it's complicated. But you can see that there, there are members of the security force, the constabulatory, coming in and converging on this thing as this ardent just begins coughing and sneezing and flailing about. And we are now a very chaotic moment. We're going to run this as a montage. So a montage is a, a mode of play where you'll all do one meaningful action. If this were a movie or a show, it's like the camera's on you for that one quick shot. And then we flash cut to another person doing something else. And this will end with 
like some kind of thing where, as we've established, the people wearing crimson are not very happy with this. So, uh, Humi, you said you're trying to slip in and do something. So I think we'll start with you then for this montage. What's your one I moment? I have to assume that Humi is the last line of defense when it comes to these types of uh, situations. And I took negotiation, but I really see it more as just being so big that people do what I say a lot of the time. Um, and I also understand from the little bit of conversation we got that this this uh, Arden couldn't didn't have the right amount of money. He, he was under negotiating, right? So, as like as soon as all hell is breaking loose, um, I just Humi just takes a very casual step over towards uh, towards the um, rumor monger. You said they were called, mm -hmm. and I say. Um, this Ardent does not have what you require. So we will simply give you what you need and you will give us um, give us this uh, information in return. And Humi is very polite, but Humi is also like nine and a half feet tall and <laughs> almost as wide. And one of his arms is this like clanking chain wrapped metal disaster. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd like to do, I'd like to, just try and negotiate with them uh, okay. and use iron um, as my edge. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so I get iron and then I have two for negotiate. And then mm -hmm. also I'd like to maybe argue tower ring was one of my aspects. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I just loom over. I have no intention of being harmful, but I, people just get worried uh, when, I, when I'm around. So yeah. So that's that sounds good. four dice, I think. Yes. And if you're willing to risk like some a resource as oh, part was, of your bargaining. I was gonna voluntarily give give a resource over. Okay, then add another D6 advantage because you're actually offering something in trade. Okay. Um I think I'll do it. I think I would put my chart. I have a dusty chart. Um and okay. I think I would just exchange for and maybe I've been hanging on this for a while and I don't mm -hmm. need it anymore. So I would just uh reach into my vest and pull out this dusty piece of paper and slide it across. Yeah. And then I'll roll five dice. Uh, six with doubles. Okay. So the guy's like, yeah, it's, it's getting very hectic in here. Just, just take it and let's just, come on. And so you hand over the dusty chart and the rumor monger signals to someone behind them and they bring over this big like burlap sack and they just plunk it on the table and say, here you go, take it. Get uh, out of here. This is not strange to Humi at all to have this information is very delivered in a sack? Oh, is it It's strange? very strange. Okay. You uh, were expecting a chart, like a little rolled up something yeah. and you got a giant sack. Uh, expressionlessly, Humi just throws it over his non-mechanical shoulder and says, it's... deal is done, Ardent lost, and then starts <laughs> to head out to the, uh, head out of the tent or wherever. Okay. And let's jump over to uh, King Oyster, because you are sitting on Humi's shoulder. So what are you doing for your moment in this? As, like, again, like, people are starting, like, it's turning into a fight. Like, it's turning into an actual fight as the security comes in, and these people in Crimson are eyeing every, all, like, your crew, and pushing people around. Uh, that's good. I already used my spore sack, so I oh, can't do that Oh, again. sorry. Um, Humi, you also got a twist. What's your oh, twist? yeah. Oh, um. Uh, what could be twisty in this situation? Um. And this is open to anybody. Do you have any, any ideas? Could the bag be like wriggling? Yes. <laughs> okay. Then the bag is wriggling a little bit. I expect I, it shifts. The weight shifts when I put it over my shoulder. Yeah. Uh, but then once it settles, it's still the weight continues to shift. Yeah. Okay. That's exactly what happens. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, King Oyster. Unless you want some more time to think, we can go somewhere else. Yeah, I I don't have anything yet because I'm not sure what. Okay. 
the conflict or stuff is. Like what? So let's go and see what um Yeah, Tempson, you've got your hand being crushed. Well, it was being crushed, but now this person is this Arden is too busy coughing, but there's a little opening for you to maybe do something. But there are more people in Crimson coming your way and I you can see them pointing at you and you can see like dude gesturing about like the sack on whom he's back. Um I I th- think well maybe he's uh even though he's not crushing my hand anymore um uh the ardent has like squeezed enough spiders out of that part of my body <laughs> that I am my what used to be my hand is a little limp now and I'm just mm-hmm. yelling like hey that hurts some of us you're going to pay for that. And I don't have any <laughs> combat skills. So, well, you don't, it doesn't have to be combat. It can just be like a moment of color as well, if you want. Um, I not really going, not really planning on doing damage, but more of kind of like a last minute, like screw you sort of thing. Just kind mm-hmm. of like whacking, uh, whacking okay. the coughing ardent when he's down with, mm-hmm. uh, uh, one of the like uh, with like uh oh, do I have anything heavy on like me skin arm <laughs> with my <laughs> with my flaily skin arm like, how dare does your, you does your calico slink do something to this guy sure yeah my <laughs> calico slink which is my semi-spectral cat that I'm very excited about is gonna be like <laughs> and scratch at him okay yeah I'm, um, I'm going full aggro for as much aggro as I can do, which isn't a lot. So what edge do you think this applies under? Oh, what edge would that? I don't have teeth. No, but I think Veils as like the spectral cat is like doing something very sudden, very surprising. Yeah. Okay. So Veils. And then mm. would I just roll one more? Well, you get one for your Calico Slink. Okay. Do, is there a skill that you think could apply in this situation? Keeping in mind that the skills a lot, again, is, like, is how you color the moment. I don't know if I have anything that would count. Well, I, I have break, but that's more about like putting like items apart, right? Not necessarily yeah. hitting someone. I think like outwit could apply here as you're just uh, like sur- catch this person off guard and like... Yeah, okay. Outwit would, would be... Yeah. Um, because that's kind of like more of like a deceptive kind of social yeah. skill, right? Okay. So I have my edge, which is 1d6, and then I have one ranking outwit, so that's yep. another 1d6. And then I have another 1d6 from my cat. Yep. Is that the idea? Yes, okay. that's the idea. Okay. Uh, that's a five. <laughs> I saw the two ones first, <laughs> and I was very, oh, or one and a two first, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> So it does create a bit of an opening and this Arden just kind of like coughs and lets you like jumps back from the sound and you have a chance to kind of get away. But now there are three of these people wearing crimson just following, like getting ready to chase you down. Um, Petrichor or King Oyster. And for these moments, you don't have to do something that involves a role. It could just be like a narrative moment that you have in the spotlight. Um. I think Petricor would want to use this opening to scoop up Tempson and get get out of Dodge. <laughs> okay. So what are you thinking here? I'm thinking a scramble for sure. Yeah. So uh hold on. Let me go back to my do to do to do. Yeah, I think this is I think this is gonna be a, a grace for me. Mm-hmm. Um Scramble, you said? Yeah, so Grace, Scramble, and I'm using different dice. You go back into the, you go back into waiting, my friend. Okay, so that's a four and a five. Okay, so a conflict. So you're able to scoop up uh, Tempson and make a break for it. Uh, along the way, I think you're going to drop something there. You're going to drop one of your resources. Aww. 
what do I have what physical resources do I have to drop? Um let's drop some leather cord. Okay. It gets lost in the scuffle. Yeah, maybe someone will get tangled up in it and fall behind. Okay. Who knows? It's behind me now. <laughs> and then let's jump over to King Oyster. What's your little yeah. moment? All right, I got it. Um, so <laughs> I assume at this point, like, uh, like Petrichor has managed to scoop up Tens in somewhat. Humi got um, has the wriggling sack, and we are all <laughs> trying to leave. Um, but you did say that there were a lot of these red scarf folks here, mm-hmm. and so I imagine that they like go to take like a shot or something at us. Uh, mm-hmm. And I want from my little from my little. Uh, shoulder perch soil bucket thing um, mm-hmm. up pops a little a little like armored shroom back little shroom back and it's my <laughs> pango shroom part pangolin <laughs> part mushroom that is well a well armored fungal companion that wants nothing more than to keep me safe uh, and so it like it literally like this fl- this shot comes flying and I'm <laughs> made of spores and mush stuff so I'm soft <laughs> Um, and this little pango shrine literally just like pops up out of our little like soil deck thing and like just like bring and like puts up its little <laughs> armor backpack um, and manages to deflect like whatever it is kind of idea. I love it. I don't, I'm not going to ask you to roll for that. That's just like a nice little <laughs> moment you have as you all make a break for it. Are you running back to your ship or you're running somewhere else? The ship, I think. We yeah, I think need. the ship makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense, especially since you said they were already chasing us, so it's not like yeah. we're going to get away without <laughs> getting chased. So, Yeah, so you make a break for it, and you're running through the streets, and you can hear people calling out in Gaudium, like, oh, these people, and they're doing this and that. And you also hear one of the crims like, they got the package, they got the package. And uh, you do make it back to your ship, And you make a break for it as you can see the people in Crimson scrambling for their ship and getting a slower start. But um, I think now's a good time to take a little break and we'll come back afterwards with a, we'll pick up after you're on your ship. Heck yeah, that sounds great. Um, So we're gonna take break. Y'all should do the same, don't forget to hydrate, take care. We will be back in just a few minutes with more Wild Sea Adventures, y'all. Thanks for hanging out. See you in a few. Oh, hi, hello. We are back. How's it heckin' going? Welcome back to our Wild Sea Adventure, where we are running away from crimson scarfed folks, apparently. (laughs) Ryan, what's happening? So, you are back on the QQ. And I guess you're slithering through the trees. And the sack is just wriggling around. And from inside, you say, you're... Hey, hey, get, come back here. Don't. That's coming from inside the sack? From yeah. the sack? Yeah. Um, our map is moving. Should we, should we open it? Look, I know I'm not one to talk, but that seems like a lumpy map. <laughs> uh, sack, we already have wriggling sack. We don't need another wriggling sack, so... Cease the wriggling. I just no. I have to get them back in right now. It appears the sack is having a time. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You're already in. Wouldn't you want to get out? Yeah, but 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 the the fireflies have to get back in. Uh, I think we should. Let it escape its skin suit so we can talk to it better. I don't know. I don't... It's a, it sounds like it shouldn't be let out. <laughs> I don't think this is a skin suit. Hey, just because there are no limbs or observation holes. No, no, that's not what I mean. I just... 
it's not moving the sack in a direction. I just, I don't think it's a skin sack. I think it's just a sack sack. I'd like to put the lean sack. closer. It's like, do you feel <laughs> constrained by your sack? By your sack sack? Uh, what's constrained? I think it wants to be let out. <laughs> I sense no threat from wriggling sack. And I just crouch down and pull the string, I guess. I assume it's tied in some way. And mm -hmm. I just undo it. And I'm like crouched down very close. And as you do it, you see some fireflies escape from the top of the sack. And then you see a little ectus built like a cannonball. Just like this little, this like a wee little guy wearing a boiler suit who kind of comes tumbling out and get the fireflies, get them, get them. And he's got this little, um, like a firefly lamp, a glass case for them with <laughs> Some nice metal work. And his little legs are, he's running around with the little legs, trying, trying to jump and catch the fireflies. And slowly they're coming back in. I would, I would like to try and help. Yeah, it does. With a bit of effort, you're able to catch them all and get them back in and shut them. Ah, oh, thank we have you. Our two smallest crew members trying to jump up and catch <laughs> the two teenies. <laughs> these two little teenies jumping around. <laughs> You said a boiler suit. That was the thing that I, uh, is that what you said? They were wearing yep. a boiler suit? I just yeah. had to Google that as well. <laughs> what, what is that? What is a boiler it's like, suit? Kind of like a one piece outfit that you'd see like, um, like a minor uh, kind of thing would wear. Oh, okay. Like a yeah, work yeah. sort of. Like a, uh, yeah. Um, jumpsuit is, it's yeah, like a jumpsuit. Like a yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. And he's, and he, they are a very round friend. Yeah, they're a round you know, Ectus like, friend in a boiler suit. Yeah, like barely four feet tall. Mm, uh, mm -hmm, mm. So are, are the fireflies the map then? Are you? The yeah, map? I would be like looking the through the bag the and like dumping out the bag, looking for <laughs> anything else that's inside of it. Yeah. All you get are just um cactus spines falling out. Ugh. Yeah. More dandruff to clean up. I, uh, I would say maybe something in Saprek to them, the language of our people. Um, the language. <laughs> it's language of our people. Uh, I'm just looking. I'm looking for it so that I know. Uh, <laughs> Tell us what um, that sounds like. The thick rolling tongue of the Ectus. Okay, almost entirely unchanged. Right. So I would say um, uh, you were misrepresented as information. Uh, so it's, spill it's it. Because the, 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 red, the red guys, they wanted me, but, but then but you were so you were so tough because you said I'll trade. And then they traded. And then I saw the other one, like, and you, and points to Petrichor, and you, like, you grab your friend, and then you ran out, and, and the other one who's like me, small. You have another small friend, and the gun was going to go pew, but then it, bing! I, so, be <laughs> I have a world building question. Yeah. Um, it, it, do do the actors have concepts of children like or are is is this is a very small actus or would i identify this as a this is call a, them a sprout can you call them sprout yes it's a yes they're a sprout <laughs> or or bud, if it's, oh, bud! <laughs> well this act is a little bit older than a bud this act is a sprout okay but I would identify them as a as a kid. This is yes, a yes, they're definitely a child. <laughs> Undoubtedly. Aaron, please no. Not all the stuff like that <laughs> in the chat. Um, <laughs> it appears we have purchased an Ectus child. Uh, I, for one, am not 
thrilled. <clears throat> we have been tricked. Uh, well, I mean, things can be more than one thing. Are you also a map? Um. No. Do you did you come from that the community? Are you from uh Sithuna? No, I'm from I'm from the Icterine. And whom you would know the Icterine as the the home place of the Ectus. Um you've uh, rambled a long distance sprout. Well, it's because uh, the guys in red uh the crams crams cramsing wheel crimson crimson wheel yeah that's what they said (laughs) the crimson wheel they are not nice and they said they wanted my fireflies and i said no and then are you being trafficked Oh, no. We can't have that. Hey, I don't think we should be using that word right now. I seeing as know. I exchanged goods for this uh, child. <laughs> you didn't know! You were tricked! We were tricked! But, but, but I... Um, Humi, you're Ectus. What is the family structure like for the Ectus? I was thinking about that, and uh, I think that they garden their own young. Mm-hmm. I think they're, you know, their children, their, their their spawns are just clippings from themselves that they just plant, um, you know, and grow. Mm-hmm. And so, I don't think there's any like. I, I I imagine what was the name of the Ectus city again? The Ictarine. The Ictory is like a, com- there's no like parents. They're just like, there's the community garden. Yeah. But, but, um, but, 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 but if you propagated a baby, then you could be the propagate. <laughs> like, you have to. <laughs> so anyway, I. I uh... so much. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yes. did we, did we learn their name yet? I... No. Okay. All right. Say it. No, well, uh, back. At the garden, they said the the bit the 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 tall at this said, "I have to be brave and tough and take care of the fireflies." So I'm going to be tough. So I'm not even scared. Um, you have come a long way. So bravery is not in question. Uh, what is your name? Uh, I'm Maka. Strong name. Yeah, I'm uh, strong. I palm Maka and pick pick them up. <laughs> uh, <Mom. laughs> uh, they're with us now, at least until we find them their next port of call. Okay, but we have. I have to take the fireflies home. Look, and the fireflies in the lamp are. Plinking against the glass in one particular direction. Um, do any of you speak knock? I do. I do. Um, what level of knock? Uh, two. Okay. You hear something that it's not quite knock. It is something very, very similar, though. It's, you can imagine, like, if it's a language, it's in the same family of languages, but it's not the same language as Nock. But they are plinking against the glass in a rhythm that is clearly trying to communicate something. Um, wait a moment. Let me try something. And I'm going to put my hand-like appendage uh, to the glass and then have the spiders inside plink back and attempt at communicating, like... Who are you? What mm-hmm. do you want? Okay. Uh, why don't you give me a roll f- with uh, knock for that? Okay. So I have two ranks in knock. So that's a 2d6, correct? Mm-hmm. And then 
would this count as a veil edge or i could see i mean or I maybe sharp... a sharps yeah sharps you're like trying to like parse what's going on okay um and then could i say i'm using my tremor sense uh to like for for advantage yeah yeah you're picking up on even finer um details yeah, to try to like better uh, understand the new ones, like the differences. Yeah. Uh, yeah for so sure. that leaves me with four d six that I'm gonna roll. Okay. All right. So that's a five with mm -hmm. two twos. So a five with okay. a double. So you get a twist. Um, you're not able to make out exactly what they're saying, but you do get the. It's almost more like you get a sense of like a feeling of longing for home. Okay. Um, and... Can the twist be that I pick up on the word from hope for home? Or... Yeah, in fact, why don't you take the whisper longing for home? Free whisper. So whispers, you can use them anytime. They are something that exists within the world. They are living words that exist within a person's mind. And when you speak them, they are lost, but they tweak reality ever so slightly. So it's basically a free twist that is colored by the name of the whisper. So you're free to use them anytime to get those extra twists. Okay. Um, Petricor, you have ghost sight, yes? Do. You can see these, the, uh, every time the fireflies light up, you can see like a glowing trail that flows out of the, of their little cage and kind of wraps up Maka in this comforting light. What a quite literally beautiful friendship. So it, but this light is clearly in the spectral realm. It's not something that exists elsewhere. The fireflies light up as usual, but yeah. this extra thing is, unless, um, maybe you get a hint of it, uh, Temsin, because of your calico slink, and it's connected to the spectral realm, but Petrico, you can see it clearly. Okay. I think at this point, Humi would be like, oh, we're being followed. And then I would just hang Maka on the wall like a planter. I'm sure we have so many hooks and things. And I would just sort of hang him there. In the and back then, of the boiler suit. Yeah, he's just sort of like, yeah, propped up with his with their little like jar. And I would, I I think each segment probably has a way to get out onto the top of it. So I just immediately crank it open and climb out to take a look. But I can be doing that while other people are doing other things, but I want to look at the situation. Well, is there anything else that you, that anyone else wants to do? Otherwise we can jump back to the present. No, we could go, we could go back to that. Yeah, this yeah. is a little technique that I saw a really good GM use of like setting up a scene and then flashing back a little bit. Yeah, weren't they really good? particularly good and I was like I gotta use that in a game it's great uh, it's a really good technique <laughs> sounds made up <laughs> uh, so you've had some interactions and it's been a few days since you've met Maka and Maka has made themselves mostly at home on the ship hanging out trying to show off how tough they are and trying to learn how to be tough from, from all of you and it's on this third day that you see that these crimson sails, the crimson wheel, are approaching, and they are approaching quickly. Uh, at this point, it's basically an inevitability that they will catch up to you. But, I mean, there's still some time to do something. So I'm going to start a track. And for anyone who's familiar with um, 
like Blades in the Dark or any Fortune in the Dark thing. It's kind of, they're like clocks. So it's just a way for me to count down how close they are to catching up to you, which gives you some time to react, but you're going to have to think quickly and be a bit clever. So I'm starting a track and it's called The Crimson Wheel um, Approaches. Everything I want to do. I don't know if it's marking Sorry, the ahead. first box of it. Okay, go ahead. Where what did is that on our sheet? No, this is secret to me. Oh, but what if you shared it with us instead? <laughs> Have you considered? <laughs> you said one's marked, and it's how do you, we know how long it is? You don't know how long, but I will give you narrative cues as to um, what's going on. However long it is, it's one shorter than it started now. Nope. <laughs> it's slightly more dire than it was a moment ago. <laughs> they um, are approaching, and they are approaching quickly. I want, I want to do a thing, if at all mm -hmm. possible. I want yeah. to run around our ship, because I mean, we do, we do like you know, treasure hunt and dive and and get stuff. I want to try and run around this ship and use a mix of my scavenging and crafting skills. And we have Firefly lights. I want to try and mock up a fake version of what Maka has here. Like, I want oh. to try and oh. craft together a fake Firefly lantern, kind of like what Maka has. Like, while mm -hmm. we're like... <laughs> can, can I help? I'm not as fast as you, but I can, <laughs> I can help. Yeah. You stay in one. Okay, so what happens is you stay in one point, and I keep bringing you stuff. I'm like, here, <laughs> this, and then I run away, and I come back, and I'm like, this. Oh, and more. I oh, another one. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm gonna say is, contribute two resources. Okay. Kind of makes sense for what you're trying to craft here. Okay. I uh, have firefly bulbs. If help, if it helps. I don't know what they could be, but they might glow like fireflies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like, um, yeah, all resources are open to interpretation. So the names are creative prompts for you. So whatever makes sense through some interpretation. So I think firefly bulbs make perfect sense. Yeah, because of what we're trying to craft here. Maybe um, if we can find a way to have them bounce I bounce have some... around in the jar a bit to make it look like they're moving. Yeah. Mm. I have some ancient wiring uh, as salvage. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Those two things make sense. I have fluted stone, which I just imagine as like a, a stone with a bunch of holes in it, so like kind of using it to like craft up container. I don't know. Yeah. Well, Same you only thing? need two things. You only need oh, two okay, things, sorry. and as long as they vaguely make sense, that's fine. Okay. So if you want to use the firefly bulbs and the ancient wiring. Yeah, that makes sense. And then I guess King Oyster, you're gonna do a craft roll then? Is that the plan? Well, if we're if it's gonna end up being crafting, is there such a thing as <laughs> assisting someone else? Cause I think we get to the point where I was one running and grabbing stuff. But I, Tempson, yeah, I you're really one. good at crafting, aren't you? I have one point in craft, yeah. Okay, I have one point oh. in craft either, so it's the oh. same, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Helping is just you'll get an extra d6 advantage, because this is certainly the kind of thing that having help would make sense. Yeah, I would like to help because like I I think it makes sense because I do also have craft and scavenge and like so I think I was yeah. running around grabbing stuff and like bringing it to Tempson to work on this thing together. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So who's going to take the role? Is it going to be King Oyster or Tempson? I think Do King I... Oyster should roll. I've rolled Dang a couple it. times. Okay. I've rolled a couple times. I, I want to give you the chance. I was trying to put this off on you. <laughs> 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 okay. Fine. So um, can this be Veils? Because I'm being sneaky. Yeah, you're making a decoy. And then I can also use my craft, right? Absolutely. And then I get one advantage from being assisted by Tempson. Mm -hmm. And take one advantage for all of the resources that have been contributed. Yeah, sweet. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. D does double doubles get me something exciting? <laughs> <laughs> I uh two fours. Two fours and two ones. So we're ignoring the ones. Okay. Two fours. Yeah, so you have a double and it's a conflict. The decoy mm -hmm. will not hold up to scrutiny. Mm -hmm. But certainly at a distance, at a quick glance, they won't be able to tell. Mm -hmm. uh, I so think it add... looks great, don't you? Maybe if we wave it at them and then just launch it at them with a catapult, they won't know the difference. So you can add it to your resources. Um, under salvage, decoy firefly lamp. Decoy firefly lamp. Um, I imagine that I would just have been standing and watching this flurry of activity uh around me and then i would lean to petrichor and say after seeing the final fi final product expressionlessly i would lean to petrichor and say perhaps uh back up evasive maneuvers as well just in case makes sense uh let's... so with all of that action there i am going to mark another box on the track the the ship is getting extremely close, and it won't be long now until they are in striking distance. They are approaching very quickly. So Sorry, I, have, Henry, I have a whisper on my that I chose Ooh. that I thought I could. It, can I just kind of invoke it whenever to yep. add add it to the scene? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to take it fairly literally, but it's uh, an iron root tree, an iron root fallen. Mm-hmm. And we have determined that we are good at burrowing through the canopy, and we are good at maneuvering, and we're very flexible. Um, so I'm thinking that we head towards it uh, and go into it where the other ship can't, uh, in hopes of, at the very least, it would be the equivalent of going into the asteroid field, you know? Uh, <laughs> uh, so I... If possible, I, do we have a cockpit? I don't even, I don't really fully understand how our ship works. So um, <laughs> we go at I the think front. We should have one if we want one. Yeah, I think we go to the front and look at some levers and switches. I mean, I guess, like, I'm not, I'm not 100% yeah. sure. I mean, it's sure. all color. So maybe I would just start stumping off towards there. Uh, but I feel like Petrichor is probably the one that's flying this thing, driving oh. this thing. Okay. Then I'm gonna follow if it you think I'm the one who's driving. Oh, it ain't. I don't think it's me. Definitely not me. <laughs> I mean, if Maybe we could. So... This sounds kind of stealthy to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, before we get there, um, so with the whisper, are you trying to like create a path for you to take? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, plotting. I, I, I'm conjuring this I, this fallen ironwood tree, and then I'm I would say put it towards a a plan of action to get into it so that where the where the other ship behind us can't follow. Oh, so you're gonna like go into a fallen ironwood down beneath? Yeah, the because we're long and newly. Yeah. I imagine we can get in and amongst branches, whereas they are gonna have to try and cut through ironwood, which, which to me sounds like very strong. Um, and especially if it's petrified too or something now, mm -hmm. it's like probably all, it may as well just be stone at this point. So so this to me sounds like uh, when you take the ship in, it's going to be a ship roll, which is just rolling one of the ship's ratings. So it won't mm -hmm. be based on your edges, skills, or aspects. It's just the rating. But what does it look like when Humi releases this whisper? Because this whisper is a real thing in the world. It's not just a mechanical thing. Oh. Um... Uh, it, it, so, sorry, it's like, a, like a, a little bottle that I have with it in it, or it's uh, like... It's a, like they're living words that reside in your mind. Oh, okay. Um... Uh... Uh, uh, like a teal flower 
blooms on the side of Humi's head and then um, immediately petrifies uh, and um, then my stumping becomes faster uh, as I realize I, that an ironwood, uh, the perfect hiding place for our ship is up ahead. So it just, the, the thought literally bursts out of the side of my head um, in, a, in flowers. I love it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so th this is like reality will shape its way around the whisper. And sure oh. enough, like- In like that case, that... there's a loud cracking sound as an ironwood starts to tumble ahead of us in real time. Beautiful. Yeah. So okay, it's going to be falling like this as we go into yeah. it. Yeah. OK, then I'm going to ask for a ship roll. <sighs> OK. So even you. And I think this will probably be stealth. And so it's just gonna be the bring it on me. Two fives. Okay. Uh describe your noodle ship getting into this tree the, this hollowed out trunk um i think as we approach it uh shivers and then i hate centipedes personally <laughs> but like a centipede just like attaches itself to the bark at on the outside and then just like slips into the hole. <laughs> okay. The conflict is it's a really tight fit and the ship gets knocked around a little bit. So you're going to take a hit to your armor. <sighs> okay. Well, I guess you're going to take a hit. You can take it wherever you'd like. You're um... going to lose one um, one mark. I'm okay with Armor, y'all. What do you think? This is our ship. We have armor to lose, right? We, like we have got space in armor. Points. Yeah, armor is one of our most best stats. Our best yeah. is most, most good. Best. And it makes sense narratively <laughs> that a bunch of stuff. This tree's falling while we're going through it, so like a bunch we of might get knocked around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, some panels get bashed off and. You know how like I, you keep, we keep describing the ship kind of like noodly. I'm imagining you know when you like slurp a noodle and it's like poof, poof, like an accident like it's gonna like wobble yeah. its little like <laughs> end tail around and like lose some armor as it's like whoa, 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 like going down the hole. Yeah. <laughs> some of that cobbled together bits. Yeah. Poor ship. Poor QQ. And I this think is... you just hear Mako. Whoa, whoa, oh, it's bumpy. <laughs> All right. Just, oh wait, he's not hanging anymore. It's been a few days. That's right, yeah. <laughs> okay. And we've definitely put him somewhere. But I almost like the idea that he likes his hanging spot. His little hanging <laughs> his hanging plant. We've got a location. little hanging like plant. He's I think right we made there. a basket. He's yeah, like a much it. nicer like he's hammock. Like a plant hammock. Yeah. In the front it's... of the cockpit like a like our dice, like our lucky dice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just have he's, little baskets set up everywhere. Girl. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's where Humi hangs his flower crowns, and they can become Maka's uh, lays. <laughs> Only the most uh, sturdy thoughts are able to burst out of Humi's head. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of effort, otherwise. All right, so we're entangled in the in the. Iron root tree? Yeah, uh, you also got a twist, didn't you? I did. I did get a twist. Any thoughts on the twist? Um, I think the, the crashing of this tree really makes the the water's turbulent. Yeah, the waves, the, the canopy is shaking around even more. Yeah, shaking around even more. So even if they saw us, 
it might be it's going to be a little bit of rough going to follow yeah, I'm gonna unmark one of those boxes for the crimson wheel approaches just because you have gone into a hiding place that they can't easily fit in and you have now they're dealing with like the like these extra waves that are going to make it that much harder to travel through so maybe really... maybe as it's falling the huge iron sword tree as it's falling it's sort of like rolling off of other trees and that's like you know yeah. it's sort of cascading down this way and that's what's giving yeah. that kind of it's like a massive feather fall but it's just mm -hmm. also th thousands of tons i presume so all right now that you're under the waves though um I'm going to ask for a seals roll because seals are your ability to keep the wild sea out and you are surrounded by it right now. We are not yes, goes. great. Why seals. are our seals not good? <laughs> These seals, this seems bad. <laughs> for for took, anyone that can't see our sheet right now, it is literally one. our lowest stat. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> is there any way to beef these numbers up? Uh, not, I mean... In principle, you can get more fittings at ports. Right. It's, but as far as roll, the roll... The roll, no. Okay. I'll, like in uh, some very unique circumstances, sometimes I've given like an extra die of advantage, but that... Right. It's like you need it's a lot. available right now. Uh, okay, so I'll roll the one die. I'll take this uh, for the team. <laughs> Uh, how how does our how how does our ship work? Like, do we like how do we steer this thing? I'm I'm asking just like narratively because I'm curious. I was almost imagining that there's two separate like steering mechanisms in two different places because we do have the little chittery like feet thing, and then we do also have the teeth, and I almost feel like they work in like very different ways. Right. I've also been imagining that instead of like a wheel or dials, it's just like an orb that we just. Ooh. Sure. Because we kind of just have to feel it out uh, as opposed to. I, I imagine there's a bit of a tank mechanic where you, you change the directions of the grinding feet so that you can. Yeah, but we have scales. Oh, right? Yeah. So, like, that's why I'm imagining more of like a three dimensional orb sure. and we just kind of like. And we're going to go this way. <laughs> okay. Uh, then probably there's like a, one of us slaps the, <laughs> slaps the orb to get it spinning to try and steer it through the, <laughs> through the tree here. I'll roll our one seal die here. Uh, three. That's good. Is it? For drama. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Because as you're going down into the street and you hear it bouncing off the side of the, the inside of the trunk, you can hear some snapping and some hissing. And you know that there is some Kreserin starting to leak into the ship. So um, I'm going to start a track uh, called Kreserin Exposure. And oh, no. I'll let you know this track has three boxes and I'm marking the first one because it's coming in and it's coming in quickly. Yum. Can I do a thing? Probably. Of course. I don't know if this will work, but I, I have an ability called Devil May Care. Does this count as an environmental hazard? Can I put myself in the way of it? Like, can I... This is definitely go, environmental hazard. Can I go to where the... Can I go running on my quick, teeny legs, whatever I use? I don't know. Maybe I got three of them. Who knows? Uh, I move very quickly <laughs> towards uh, where this leak is occurring, and I, like, I, I'm imagining it starting to leak in, and I just want to, like, um, put myself in the way and try and, like, spew my own leaking outward to get it to go the out like I'm trying to out I'm trying to out leak it right now I'm trying to like <laughs> yeah give it a shot okay so um that's devil may care treats conflicts as triumphs when avoiding traps and environmental hazards but I'm assuming this is still kind of a roll yeah situation so basically um, if you get a four or a five it will behave like a six 
Okay. Ah. Okay. 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 Um. 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 um, um. So. <sighs> what the heck am I using for this? Um. D d d d d d d d d. Goodness gracious. Sorry, I'm like. Uh, I think I'm moving just on instinct. Does that make sense? Like, I'm literally mm -hmm. just reacting. It's not, um, yep. not well thought out. This is not a well thought out plan. <laughs> this is a, like... <laughs> by the seat <laughs> this, of your pants? Yeah, by the seat of my fungi pantaloons. Um, uh, maybe I'll use... Goodness, uh, I don't know whether it would be like a craft or a leap, like if I'm just leaping in or climbing or crafting or... You know what? Given how you've described it, I feel like leap is totally reasonable. <laughs> I would love it to be leap. <laughs> it's literally just, it's literally just king of Yeah, it's literally just th literally throwing themselves. They are just yeah. like, <laughs> Yes, you played okay. uh, Kingdom Hearts, right? Yeah. You know how the white truffles would just fling themselves? Yeah. Sometimes that's yeah. A, I, that's what I'm imagining. <laughs> that's me. That's me right now. Okay. I'm going to use some different dice for this because mine have not been nice to me. So um, instinct, so leap. Instinct, leap, and... I'm looking at my items. I'm looking at my, um, oh, okay. I have something called a crowning leaf and I'm going to say, can I say that this is like from one of my trips to the tippy, 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 tippy top. It is mm -hmm. this ginormous leaf, but I normally keep it rolled up like around myself, almost like mm -hmm. a little blanket or something. And I'm like throwing myself at this leak and just like, whoop, like trying to put my crowning leaf on it as yep. like a blockage thing. Okay, so I'm so rolling yeah, with... That will give you an extra die, and yeah. take a second die of advantage. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. I am... Okay. Okay. Hoo boy. Come on, Dicey's. Uh, a five. A so five and two twos. You got the second die, because as you do this, you hear other quick footsteps coming up behind you, and just like a... Ah! as Maka leaps with you and ha. tries to help you hold up. And they'll see because I got to be tough because I want to be a wild sailor too. I got to be tough. <laughs> the two teeniest tinies. <laughs> just... Oh my gosh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it's also really tough to help. That's a good thing. You should always do that one. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um, so you're going to lose the crowning leaf. Okay, that's and... fair. <laughs> but... Uh, because you get to treat tri uh, conflicts as triumphs, it's basically like rolling a six. So you stop the hole, and you have managed to hold off the Kreserin for the time being. It's not a perfect hold, so it won't last forever, but no, it no. is good for now. Yeah. Can I, can I just imagine that, like, I'm, like... I'm trying to use like sm smeary spore stuff to like stick it to the wall, <laughs> and that Maka has like little needles that they're like, <gasps> they're, like ding ding oh, ding ding, ding with the, with all their little like needles, and we're like working together to like make this imperfect seal, <laughs> like <laughs> perfect, love it. Okay, the immediate danger is past. And Maka kind of sits down and takes out the, the real firefly lamps. And the, they're kind of plinking in the same direction. It's like, they just, they really want to go home. How can we get them home? Uh... I have an ability called Wild Words, uh, mm -hmm. which I can mark to remember a rumor or folktale pertinent to our situation. Yeah. Um, and since we're all we're all cactuses here. Uh, it makes sense <laughs> that maybe I might know a little bit about why these fireflies are important, where they want to go. Yeah, sure. So I'm marking marking one there. 
Okay. Where did you hear this story or who did you hear it from? So uh, Humi is a rootless, uh, a rootless origin. So kind of uh, not kind of born amongst the, the wild sailors, I think. Um, so very few stories got back to me from the actual like Ectus. Maybe there was a garden. I was born on a garden ship of some kind, you know, that mm -hmm. was a separate thing. And so, or born, is that the right? Anyway. I blossomed. I bl I bloomed on a on a <laughs> on a garden ship, and but I had one book uh, uh, of of Ectus um, fairy tales and folklore that I still have, but now is barely I can barely open it. I've got it memorized. I don't need to have it uh, really anymore. I've read it so much, but um, it's the source of most of my treasure hunting. Um, excitement, and uh, I, I think of it as a map. I'm convinced that everything in it is true. Um, so, but yeah, it's been with me for so long, and it's covered in sap and stuff now. It's just like I couldn't open it if I wanted to, but it's the source of all of my legend lore, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, the story in question is called By Firefly's Light. And that's the name of our story. Oh, <laughs> he said. He said the title. What? <laughs> and in this story, an old Ectus Char named Shemai uh, was sailing the wild sea. Of course, Shemai rarely sailed alone. No, Shemai was one much for company friends in the galley. But on this particular voyage, Shemai did find themselves alone. And after many days at sea, Shemai decided to cook a proper meal as though all their friends were still present. And as Shemai cooked and set spaces, the seats began to fill up, not with people, but with fireflies. And the fireflies lit the galley as Shemai sat down to this feast. And this was a journey near the end of Shemai's life. And Shemai had had many friends come and go. And as they sat at the long table, they saw the image of their friends and the fireflies glow. And they looked to Shemai and all said, Thank you. I think we're ready to go home. And the fireflies coalesced at the front of the ship where Shemai followed them for several days until he came to a clutch of firefly eggs that cleaved the realm in two. And for just a moment, Shemai could see the image of their old friends slip from the material realm into the spectral realm, finally at rest. Um, I would probably scoop up Maka uh, and the fireflies, and I would bring them up to the front and put them in, his, in their little hanging basket. Um, and say, we go where they go. We, we point the ship in the direction of their clink and we get these souls home. All right, let's go. Um, I'm a little bit sad that they're gonna leave though. It's not right to keep things trapped in jars for too long or in sacks mm. unless it is their choice of course mm. okay it, it will hurt but then it will the sap will heal it over okay okay so I think we should have a little journey 
Um, so yeah, let's use the journey rules. The way that works is I'll start a track for how far you have to go. And you will get to choose how quickly you're moving. And someone will be on watch to see what kind of things you encounter along the way. And this will feel very similar to Adele. Uh, so whoever is at the helm can choose the speed. You can either cut a path, which is go at an even pace. You'll mark one box on the track typically. And if you are, hit any hazards, you'll have time to react. You can be a bit proactive. You can cut a path, which is moving quickly. You'll typically mark two boxes on the track. But should you come across any hazards, you'll be going kind of headfirst into it. And you can also drop anchor, which will give you time for a montage, which will let you do things like heal or craft or do things around the ship. But of course, you won't, um, you won't make any distance, and there's still the potential for danger. So who is on watch and who's at the helm? Did we figure out who was? <laughs> is Petra well, we're all going to be taking Pet turns. Take so. turn. OK. Yeah, so who's going to start? Oh. I'll be on watch for the first. Yeah, that's what I was going to. Go ahead. Should we have one big and one small in our two shifts? Mm -hmm. I can, sure. yeah, I can help. I'd like to take the help action, please. Okay. Um, so whoever's on watch, I'm not going to make this a long track, but whoever's on watch, you're going to do a watch roll, which is rolling 1d6. It's not um, triumph, conflict, disaster. It's just to determine what you encounter, so what kind of thing. If a one to three is something from nature. Four to five is order, which is something from like, people, um, cultures. And a six is just peace. You just have a peaceful uh, part of the journey. All right. So I'm on, I'm on watch. I'll roll the six. OK. And whoever is at the helm, you get to choose how fast we're going, whether it's mm. Um, cutting a path, forging ahead, or dropping anchor. Do I do I wait and see like what we saw first, or do I? No, we do all the rolls first, and then we determine what's going on. Okay. Um. So do I declare it, sorry, or do I roll it? You declare it. So if you're okay, going fast, so. we're going fast. If we're going at an even pace, we're going at an even pace. I'm going to say we're going fast because I just think okay. that's what King Oyster wants to do. <laughs> and you let them apparently control this. So now this is happening. <laughs> now we need to I sleep roll. sometimes. I roll to see how dangerous the thing is. Everyone else goes too slow. I need to hurry <laughs> up. We need to get there faster. <laughs> OK, so uh, Jordan, what did you roll? I got a four, uh, order. A four, so order. Along the way, you see like an old, an old, like a, there's a, a flashing light somewhere in the distance. You're still underneath all the branches. And it's unusual to see a flashing light down here. But this flashing light is not, it's not like the flashing of a firefly or some other creature in the sense that this is like, it is very rhythmic perfectly in time it looks like some kind of mechanism uh, does anyone speak signaling i i've got one in signaling okay um do you want to you are welcome to roll to try and decipher what it's saying can i assist because i also have signaling yeah yep. you've got veils too right I've got veils and I've got signaling and I've got scrutinize. Yeah, I don't. So only um, one language or skill at a time. Though. Okay. So if you're using signaling, then. I just, I don't think grace, iron, or tides. Oh, tides, I, I could argue, would help. Yeah. Maybe. Tides could work. Um, yeah, if you want to help King Oyster, I'll, I'll make the roll, or you can make the roll. You haven't rolled in a bit. 
and I'll help you. No, you please go ahead. Please go ahead. Okay, so yeah, take an extra die of advantage for getting I help. jump back up on my little perch, and I, like, take Humi's head in my little hands, and I turn it in the direction of the thing, <laughs> and I'm like, that way. Is Humi's head, like, the size of the monster's <laughs> body? <laughs> That's what I've been imagining yeah. personally. Okay. Um, can I invoke my scars remember aspect? Just as the wild sea teaches harsh but useful lessons. Yeah. Um, Let's get a bit of color in there. Something I've in, this is reminding me of something I've seen before. Okay. Yeah. But that it, you can take it as that it's given me a scar. <laughs> Uh, so that's uh, three dice. Oh, four with the help. Yeah. Ooh, that's a lot of low numbers. Uh, double threes is my highest. Oh, geez. oh, boy. I don't have eyeballs, so I might not have been the right person. <laughs> for this. You are in the cockpit, I imagine, like looking out, trying to decipher this light. Uh, I'd feel maybe I'd also feel safe up on the up on top. I have a I, I've statted my uh, my uh, friend here to have wave walk, and so a lot of okay. time I think I would just sit on top while we. Oh, were do going. we have like a crow's nest sort of situation, or I just imagine there's all these places we can just pop our heads out all along. Yeah, the... but just don't forget you're okay. still underneath the um underneath the canopy, oh. right? Okay, okay. I guess that's dangerous to do that. Um, yeah. Cockpit, it is then. Okay. As you are squinting. And trying to decipher this with King Oyster there and like yeah, squinting. <laughs> with King Oyster there and like as you're discussing this, something just slams into the side of the ship. Something huge. And it's probably around then that you realize, oh, it's saying warning. But there is something on the outside of the ship trying to get in. And given enough time, it will. Oops. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Whoops a daisy. Some somebody starts spinning the orb. Um, to the surface. <laughs> can I like how big is the orb? Can I jump on top of it and just run? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see why not. <laughs> I, yes, I love it. <laughs> it's happening now. <laughs> okay. Um, do you want to? So, what are you hoping to do with this jumping on top? Just, it's an immediate like I regret everything, and like <laughs> t like an immediate about face. I don't know how this ship of all ships, with its weird segmented body could possibly do it but i'm trying to like do an immediate like about face like i <laughs> i have made okay. mistakes that i must undo <laughs> i'm hitting i'm hitting i'm hitting control z <laughs> like... <laughs> all right that sounds like a tilt roll then because you're talking about like doing these like maneuvers so why don't you roll 2d6 for your ship okay Oh ship, oh ship. I like the okay. idea of surfacing for, for, for the record as well. I'm and gonna go with Okay. Going with completely different dice. All these other ones have betrayed me. <laughs> I'm also starting a short track about the thing entering the ship, and I've marked the first box. Uh a five. A five? The you surface. That your ship, what does it look like as it comes climbing out of the leaves? Um, it it goes too far, so it's like this, like you know, this long spindly with too many legs thing that like crests and like bursts out, <laughs> and then like is a little bit too up and is like and has and to yeah, like slam. has to come back <laughs> down, like has to like <laughs> like land a little like bit. A porpoise. Yeah, it's <laughs> something that like you would look at and think, oh, maybe that could be graceful. Men, no, <laughs> that's not what happens yeah, here. Belly <laughs> yeah, it does a big floop. <laughs> the conflict is um, in all this. You didn't quite shake off the 
thing on the outside and it's working its way in, but you are above the waves now, which probably puts you in a less precarious situation if you wanted to do something else about it. Um, any doubles? No, because I only had the two, so it was a okay. five and a three. Uh, yeah, so this thing is trying to get in desperately. Uh, do we have like an alarm system? Do we have like something that we can like alert the rest of the crew to like? Is the alarm <laughs> just uh, Tamsin screaming? <laughs> 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 I yeah, feel like as soon as we started pulling G's and heading up towards the surface and then slamming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I and feel like everyone, anyone that was resting, like hit the ceiling and then hit yeah. back down. Slammed well, into don't the forget, top bunk. Your crew is also just a bunch of squirrels. <laughs> yeah, nice. they'll be fine. They're <laughs> holding on for dear life. I'm little somehow not flies. concerned about the squirrels. Yeah. yeah, the squirrels are probably the best. Like honestly, they're the best out of this than any of us. Uh, and also, I Petricor, though. <laughs> <laughs> I misread squirrel flingers the first time I went, and I thought it said squirrel fingers. Like, just... <laughs> <laughs> so they have such grippy little squirrel fingers. They are. <laughs> So yeah, this thing is still trying to get in. Uh, what would you like to do about that? Now that the now that Petricor and Timson are awake, is maybe they've got some things. We decide not to arm our our ship. <laughs> so. A thing which I am regretting a bit now. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm staring. Can at I try to aspect. talk to it? Ooh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're probably gonna have to see what it is. Yeah, I'm gonna poke my head out the top, I guess, as okay. twigs and stuff are whipping by. And this is when you see that it's not one thing, but many things. Yikes. There are these like primate like creatures that are climbing around the ship, but they're all wearing masks. And they all are just hooting and slamming their fists against the ship. And you can see bits of it flying off. And a couple of them see you. And they don't look particularly happy. Um... These creatures are called Macazine. them can you make i think i think i pop out like look let me just go talk to the thing i look at i look at them and then i pop back down and i'm rapidly (laughs) screwing it back like it's not one thing it's uh it's several things it's a it's a pack of macazies Oh dear. Actually, it's a, a bravado of macazies oh i'm sorry it's (laughs) a bravado of macadies um, Very correct. <laughs> would we have encountered something like this before? Uh, yeah, like this. This is not an unknown thing in the wild sea. But I think actually the sheer number of them, you were not expecting it. So, Petricor, you're going to mark one mire. Okay. How does? Ooh, how does this work? So your mire, you can choose whichever one you want and put and mark one box. Okay. If you act in a, if you behave in a way that is in like direct opposition to that mire, you will cut one die from your roll. Cutting is, you cut one uh-huh. result. So you roll all your dice and then you drop the highest. <gasps> Yikes! Oh okay. boy. And you mark mire when you see terrible things on the sea. But is this still the case if we've been rolling very poorly though? Is that? Are you sure? Are you sure that that's still how that mechanic I'm works? Pretty sure been... that, I'm pretty <laughs> sure how that. I'm pretty sure. GM, have her. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! But <laughs> okay, um, cool, cool. I marked um, 
let me just run and I didn't type the whole thing as yet yesterday because I was sleepy. So I marked the Meyer, your ancestors whisper of their disappointment. <laughs> so Sam, how could you, Sam? <laughs> Oh, and I can see ghosts, right? So, yeah, like, so I imagine now they're that doing they're just—they're just hanging out, like they're just like. Is there one? Is there one ancestor in particular, or is it just like oh is it the like peanut gallery is there? On? I think it's the peanut gallery. It's very okay. um, Statler yeah. and Waldorf. Okay. I—I <laughs> I don't think Petricor knows why, like, they're the one that has these fox hanging around. <laughs> yeah did you want to try one a uh, social role against the magazines um i don't know there's very many of them but maybe they have a boss but maybe they only work as one big bravado <laughs> it's a hive mind of primates there's, there's <laughs> only can... so much bluster you can have in your bravado maybe we can tempt it with some of my home cooking <laughs> Maybe I like just that hungry. idea. Can Maybe? we just fling some home cooking at them? Well, if Tamsin wants to run to your makeshift kitchen and try and whip something up, sure, uh, cooking in like the loosest sense of the word, like when you cook a salad. <laughs> I will say that the time to do that in that time, I am going to mark another box on. Uh, on them entering the ship and because they saw where the door is they have a pretty good idea of how to get in so I'm going to say I'm going to mark a box unless somebody else does something about it I have some salvage wreck iron plating which I'm mm -hmm. sure I was saving for some other project but if someone is willing to help me uh, just put this over where they are maybe it could buy us some time I think that sounds reasonable but I don't uh, have craft or anything. So. I have I have climb and craft and leap. I have many, so many will, options. <laughs> I will leap from your shoulder with, or with I, crafts. Alter, alternatively, I just lean against it. I uh, I like you just lean against it and become part of door. Yeah. Oh, I like that too, actually. Because then I then I could probably use um I've got block. Oh yeah. I could do iron and block, um, and then uh, probably get towering or something. Definitely, definitely. Right. I'll hold them off, but you have to fix this. I can't stand here this whole time. Uh, so yeah, that's, do I get something for the wreck iron, if I spend the wreck iron plating or? Uh, I think. It doesn't really not... go anywhere. Yeah, it's just you're going to be risking it. It's like it's coloring how you're doing this. Mm -hmm. So it could break in this process, but we'll find out. Uh, so one for iron, one for um, block. Block and one for towering. And one for towering. Okay. Yeah. Three. Our favorite number. <laughs> uh, Tempson, do you want to do your cooking roll? Yeah. What are you cooking with? Um, uh, you mean like in terms of skills or like in terms? No. Of what are you? What are your um ingredients? Like, uh, you'll need some kind of specimen to cook. Some kind of specimen. All right. Yeah. Well, the only specimen I have with me right now is venom extract. So, <laughs> um, can we say I mash that in some like leftover? stew that we have <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah um sandwich it between some bread all right okay so i was gonna say could i make this a uh a sharps roll because i'm trying to like think about how ingredients are going to go yeah. together um so that are you trying to make um like a poison or is it just like when people do a shot of snake venom and it's like this, ooh, but. Oh no, I was gonna poison them, but drunk monkeys sounds a lot fun, more fun, funner, <laughs> more exciting. Uh, so yeah, like, I mean, I also think that if I'm, I'm gonna be trying to make like a lot of it, so mm -hmm. watered down, it probably wouldn't actually poison them. Uh, okay. Be like, like, 
be like Put a mild in, high. Make him of. a bit woozy. Yeah. Okay, cool. Get him, uh, get him high. Yeah. Uh, so 1d6 for sharps, 1d6 for cook. Yep. Uh, well, 1d6 from the venom. Would, mm-hmm. would I argue that? Yep. Okay. Two fours and a two. Um, so you make this concoction and you have like, you have one application of it. You have like one serving, we'll say. Oh, uh, what's the name of your dish? Uh, <laughs> food fight surprise. There you go. Food, food fight surprise. Fight surprise. <laughs> So you got one food fight surprise, which will potentially drunken some monkeys. Okay. But uh, while you're cooking, you hear this slamming as these, as a door crashes in and Humi gets knocked to the side. And Macadrills are not weak creatures at all. So you're actually going to take four points of damage, of blunt damage. So it says... um. It says I have two things that say that I increase impact when defending myself with this trait. Does that mean does that factor in here at all? Uh, that would be on a conflict or a triumph. What you do is e- like works even better, but because it was a disaster, you have okay. not successfully defended yourself. So I have to take. Uh, you said four. I yeah. got to notch four things. Yes, and it has to be in the same track. Unless oh. it fills, and then you, the overflow goes to another aspect. All right. Well, um, I guess that's going to go all into my scars. Remember, because it's five. Okay. Track. Yeah, these are not weak creatures. All right. Um, uh, and now they are flooding into the ship. I guess. We'll say there are like I... two groups of them. We're gonna treat them as two like two packs. Uh, what's notable about the two group that just bravados? Sorry, two bravados. <laughs> oh my god! When he turned turn, turned on you, <laughs> <laughs> they're two bravados. <laughs> oh my um, god. What's notable about the one that just came crashing in, Humi? Um, you said they were wearing masks. Yeah. Uh, this one also has strapped arm plates to its forearms. Okay. So it's got some kind of like makeshift armor. Yeah. The other one, the other group, the other bravado doesn't. They've got something else that we'll determine later on. But yeah, with them all climbing in, uh, Tamsin, you've made your, uh, your food fight surprise. Do you want to deliver it? Or are you going to give it to someone else to deliver? I am not good at throwing things. Uh, it's too big for the it's too big for the squirrels to throw, though. Um, well, I, I think her or I think their plan was to go and give it to Humi, but then they kind of like waddle up. And they're like, "Oh no, Humi!" Humi's pushing a, a iron plate off of himself as a, this thing is bearing down on us. Ah. Uh, P- Petrichor, c- can you take this? I will take this. And, uh... <sighs> I guess I will attempt to negotiate with this bravado and get them back <laughs> out with this food sprite surprise. This he- the healing power of a sandwich. So, yeah, the one with the uh, strapped on arm plates is leading this little group of them, this little bravado, the baby bravado. Okay, so. Basically, a giant edible. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to get out and they're going to get high. That is my plan. <laughs> um, so, it would be would tides work for this? Yeah, like they're a creature of the wild sea. Yeah, so I got tides, I got negotiate, and I have 
this food fight surprise. <laughs> okay. There's a six. There's a six. There's a six. <laughs> Is that the first triumph? Yes. <laughs> Three, six, 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 six feels like something though. <laughs> it's just, it's just one six and then a two <laughs> and a one. Oh, okay. I was just like, wait. Yeah, no, no, there's a six. I'm so used to like. So the, the Macadrill looks at you and looks at the stew and it's got his arms raised. Oh, so just, how, well, just did do a triumph. Thanks, chat. <laughs> and you've got your um, pattern sash as well, right? Yes, and that would have made a, a conflict still into it. Good yeah. Enough. So it kind of eyes you and takes the soup and smells it. Still like watching you and kind of. <laughs> and then Can you I tell them to take it to go. I I'm trying <laughs> to tell them to take it to go. Uh. So they are momentarily distracted while they, they eat this stuff. I started a new track. It's called, But Then I Got High. <laughs> <laughs> and I have marked a box because they are eating this stew. <laughs> Man, I hope this is like a two track or track and then we just push <laughs> some high ass monkeys back out the way they came yeah I is just try to herd them to like be closer to the door is that something I can do is it just grab that iron plate and just sort of okay it's time for you to leave now <laughs> they're not totally docile yet they're not quite high but they are imbibing I would be very good at punching one of these things out, but I don't want to hurt them if we're not. If that's not what we're planning to do. Well, well especially because yeah. there's so many. I, you can like hit one, and then the rest will get angry. I don't think I we think want more we get, angry monkeys. If, yeah, if we get enough out, then we can maybe try and seal the hole at least. So mechanically, the way this works is that macadrills have a very long track. As you start coming up with different plans and different ideas, I start splitting up that track into different chunks. So the tracks get shorter. And then as you push towards those various goals, I will mark all boxes appropriate. And as things fill up, I will tell you what's going on. Right. Hey. So I've, the track, but then I got high, has removed some track from the Macadrill and come into this new one. So you're still pushing the narrative forward. Awesome. Um, but yeah, this other bravado is now coming in and they spot Maka and they are chasing Maka and Maka is running as fast as their little legs will take them. But then you can say, no, I gotta be tough. And they turn around and they just leap at them like a little cannonball. Like a little dodgeball. <laughs> yeah, like a little dodgeball. And it smacks into them and it doesn't hurt it, but Maka also doesn't get hurt. Maka just like kind of falls aside, like, Whoa! and then just keeps running. I love this small child. No, Maka! <laughs> uh, King Oyster, did you see this happen? This, um, this cannonball? Is Maka okay? Like, they. What did he. Sorry, they. They just like ran and jumped. They like tucked into a little ball with their spikes out and just like flung themselves into like a little cannonball, but they're just not quite big enough to make it really work yet. Can I? Oh, I'm so I don't know whether like I want to ask either if I can catch them or help them, like slingshot them. <laughs> like I'm wondering what's better. You can definitely do all of those kinds of things. <laughs> slingshot. Do uh, like okay, Maka, you really want to be tough? You sure? Yeah, I gotta be tough on the wild sea. Okay, I'm gonna try <laughs> and like um assist them by oh god uh, 
I guess leap, like trying to build up their momentum. Mm hmm. And then, and then, and then sling them faster. To okay. Assist them in making this happen to see if we can, like, I'm gonna bowl for monkeys with Maka. We're gonna <laughs> try and. You said they All were right. cannibal shaped from the very beginning, so this. <laughs> I, I guess this was meant to be. I'm gonna try and. Well, the arms and legs in, little kid. Okay, tuck, tuck and roll, tuck and roll. Just keep it going. As long as you keep moving, you won't get hurt. Just like I'm ready. Use that momentum. Here we go. And then I <laughs> gonna try and chuck them. Okay. Oh God. Um, I love the tiny mentor, tiny pupil. <laughs> we do we, we do tiny things. To... <laughs> Listen, you can't discount us just because we're tiny folk. Um. <laughs> Like oh, right. just standing there with these two bouncing around. Yeah. <laughs> Try to see. Would this be tides or instinct? I think it. Tides is exploration, not really movement, right? Like mm -hmm. tides isn't movement. So I don't think yeah. I have any. I don't think I have an edge. I don't think I have an edge for this. Oh, I only have one. Yeah, this is gonna go so poorly. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, baby ball. <laughs> oh no. Okay, I think I literally only have. I think I only literally have one dice for this. Um. I'm looking through everything I own. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Don't forget. You also have things like whispers, which are always interesting. Yeah, you know, I have micro, micro, micro sanctum My rumblings, you which is find, like. I you did find it in a micro sanctum. Oh, that's right. Huh. So despite this, this, this little kid is an ectus, but something about him is like, can we say something about him? I almost feel like he was like. Almost like he was like. Like sporifically blessed. <laughs> like I love that. Mike, you're, Mike, uh, you're you're a gal. It could just be your bond. Yeah, we we have we have bonded in our in our short amount of time. <laughs> um, and I feel I I I all I want to do is help this little. I want to help this little person do their thing, and I'm gonna do everything I can within my fung <laughs> fungal abilities. <laughs> <laughs> To send them to send them flying. Um, goodness gracious! Uh, Are you gonna use the whisper Michael Sanctum rumblings? Yeah, I'm gonna. If that's okay. Yeah. Um, so I think I have two dice. I think that's all I have. Uh, you're not gonna need to roll for this because you're using the whisper. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what is it like? How does King Oyster release this whisper? Oh, I it's 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 once again kind of just this like almost um bagpipish balloon releasing <laughs> air kind of noise um as they're kind of just putting this wish out into the universe for this <laughs> little their little friend <laughs> like please <laughs> they just want to be tough <laughs> please just let this happen. Like And then you fling them. And then I fling them. <laughs> and you just hear Maka going, ah! <laughs> But as Maka starts flying through the air, spores start to swirl around him. And they just and there's like this rumbling that is like like Maka was fired from a cannon. It's like rumble reverberates through the ship. And Maka just crashes into this bravado and knocks a bunch of them down and cracks one of their masks. <gasps> wow. What a good little boy. <laughs> and then Maka like pops up on her like, I did it. Yeah. I did it. I did it. Cause yeah. I'm tough. I'm tough. And then just keeps running away from them. <laughs> Is this happening, sorry, in the same place? Uh, yeah, the same area as uh, Humi. Uh, um, 
Yeah. How bothered do they seem? Are they? I mean, they're just, they are aggressive by nature. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Petricor. Yes. The one that, uh, with the, the cracked mask, the mask is rosewood and it has these like kind of two toned grains. And with it cracked, you can see some kind of spectral echo leaking from it. Haunted mask. And um, I've heard about this Legend of Zelda game. <laughs> <laughs> you can see behind their mask, and there are no features. And I think, Humi, you can see this as well, just like the, the absence of features. In fact, I think the only one who doesn't see this is Tempson, because you're in the kitchen. So I'd like the three of you to mark Meyer. Another Meyer. Yum. It does not have to go to the same one. You can go to a different one. All right. My marking outsiders are difficult to trust. <laughs> Seems appropriate. And I'm just going to grab the, the piece of metal and slam into these things as hard as I can to knock as many of them out the hole. Okay. Because something's up and I don't want them here anymore. All right. Let's get a roll for that. Um, so I think I'll do iron and strike, which gives me three dice. And then um, I think I'll invoke scars remember. Yeah. Scars remember or towering, I guess it would probably yeah. help. Yeah, I mean, either or. Um, all right. Anyone else want to slam into this with me? Um, which group, which bravado are you slamming into? The one with the crack mask or the one with the Yes, armor the one plate? that just uh, caused me to invoke my uh, Meyer, okay. I think, yeah. Um, I'm not sure how helpful I can be. I got double sixes. Yikes! That's <laughs> awesome! So, um, with a triumph, you can do damage or deal an effect. Okay. With a um, with a twist, you can basically do a second hit. So you can do more damage, or you can do an effect with the second hit, or you can treat it as a twist as usual. I don't really care about hurting them, but I just want to knock them out because I'm sure if they fell out into the canopy, they'd be fine. Uh, mm -hmm. right? So you so want to knock them off the ship? Yeah. My only we, there are intruders now, and okay. they aren't they aren't just hang they're not hanging around for lunch so okay yeah. um so that's one of those so are you gonna do that twice over then with your twist yeah and then this is being added to a track of some kind yeah for them okay yeah that's, and that's... yeah so like you send a a good number of them off there are only two left on the ship the one with the cracked mask and the um the other one or just another one and then there's the group that is eating uh eating the stew and a bit of time has passed and they're still eating and you can see them starting to like kind of stumble around and look a little bit woozy so I'm marking but then I got high again uh, and I guess like narratively I'll lean against the I'll just like shield lean against them as best as I can to, mm -hmm. so that people can move back and forth yeah um the one with the cracked mask is like he saw you, uh, Humi. Actually, no, saw King Oyster, um, like launch Maka, and they're not happy. And the one with the cracked mask pulls at the mask, and you can't see it, but you can feel just this malevolent wave coming your way. What do you do, King Oyster? Yeah, King Oyster. Okay, well, it's funny you should... Okay, so here's what I was thinking. <laughs> um, I have been looking at some of the, you know, fittings that we put on our ship, and I'm like, hey, you know, what's a what's fun thing that we took and haven't used yet? And I'm thinking the rig ropes. Can I'm thinking I'm going to run at this dude, like, with one of the ropes and jump, <laughs> like, try and take him off with me is that a thing i can like off do the ship? yes i want to try and jump <laughs> off the ship with this dude <laughs> like yes 
Um, I see him coming at me right as I'm eyeing the ropes, and I want to kind of like charge at him in the same at the same time as he charges mm-hmm. at me. But so. as I go, I want to like. <laughs> <laughs> so. So I'm gonna say you'll take some damage because you're not really trying to avoid the. No. Like getting hit, but that's fine. You can definitely um, try and knock this thing off. Yeah, that's right, my. So what are you uh, gonna give me? Well, because as a shankling and a dredger, like some of my stuff, like as a dredger, my stuff is like jumping off into stuff. Yeah. Like mo- one of my favorite things to do is to jump off stuff, y'all. That's one yeah. of my- <laughs> Um, and I want to use advantage from like this rope rigging. Like, why else do we have this rope rigging if not yep. to do bananas maneuvers with? Yeah. So I definitely want to like try and like I'm small. I'm not large. I'm gonna take a hit, but I also just want to try and use the momentum against mm-hmm. him. And um, maybe I'll even do it the reverse. Maybe I won't even charge at him. Maybe I'll like. As he's coming at me, kind of back up, grab the rope, and then and just, throw us both off, like mm, backwards, off. Yeah. Like since he's he's bigger and charging me, so I'm gonna let like I'm gonna be yeah. like, yeah, bud, come on, let's go. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> um, right, so, so I'm gonna use. Edge? Yeah, uh, I think this is. Uh, da, 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 da. Is this veils? Cause it's sneaky, like it's kind of tricksy. I'm um. Bills, edge, shadow, cipher, secrecy, no, tides, exploration. Can it do can it be related to my exploration of jumping off a lot of stuff? I was I think this feels very tidesy. Yeah, I think this is tides, because I'm like yeah. pulling some maneuvers here. Um so I'm gonna use <sighs> Is this can I relate this to wave walk? Cause I do. Yeah, it you're sending to, yourself it's... out into the waves. Yeah, that's my plan. I'm literally like one of my things is like I like jumping yeah. off stuff into the waves. So yeah, I'm yeah. using tides. I'm walk using wave sure. walk, and I am flinging us both off this ship. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, um, so take one die for the rig ropes. Yep. And then one for your edge, and then two for wave walk. So you'll have forty six. Yep. yep. And hokey doke. Um, can I use? Does this count? I don't know if this counts, but can I use my devil may care here? Cause I'm like, I don't know. Uh, no, I guess not. It's not really an environmental hazard or a trap. Okay. <sighs> Come on. Come on. Come on, game. Come on, dice. Let's go. Go dice. Go dice. I got a six and two fours. Okay, so same deal. Uh, You can deal damage or you can do an effect. I want to do an effect. I want it. I want to like fully just (laughs) like taunt this taunt this dude, take him off the ship like just and in a fluid motion reappear back on the (laughs) ship and be like, hey, (laughs) y'all. So (laughs) how's this as you're twist you can just end up back on the ship yeah <laughs> but you uh you managed to take another one right off and so now the only <laughs> one left is the one without the map or with the mask still and then the small bravado that is getting woozy <laughs> um petricor we haven't heard from you in a little while what do you yeah. think I'm thinking that while that last one with the mask is distracted looking at um, the best, the best oyster, <laughs> king oyster, truly king, I want to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> Just straight up. Yeah, go for it. Um, so I, let's see. I didn't take teeth. I did take instinct. Because I feel like that's. I mean, a hunter's instinct is to shoot prey. To shoot things. This this is a thing for shooting. I have a two and shoot. Mm -hmm. Um, Would you call this. 
this poor creature an unaware target? The one that's paying attention to not you at all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so that means my impact will be increased. Mm-hmm. Okay. And let's just, so I think it's just the three. I don't think there's an advantage here. Um, well, you get your, you're using your bow, I assume. Yeah. Oh, right. That is an advantage. There goes four. Yep. Uh, what kind of arrow are you using? Um, Spike, I don't know toxin, what these blast. damage types mean. Spike is going to stick into you. Toxic, toxin is, um, poisonous. Blast is like an explosion. Volt is electricity. And salt is anywhere between literal salt to spectral stuff. These are kind of ghostly. I'm going to go with salt. Do it up. Um, The highest is a five. Mm-hmm. And no doubles. So what does this shot look like? Um, definitely like a weird arrow. So... I feel like sea salt doesn't exist anymore because we don't have a sea that's made of water. <laughs> a different kind of sea. Uh, <laughs> tree salt. Yeah. But there's definitely a lot more mineral salt because all that salt had to go somewhere. So I think sometimes you find like spheres of salt crystal Ooh. and a, a talented person can whittle those down into like arrows. So it's literally a salt crystal. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's so good. And I, I, I'm I, far enough back, and I just aim up, and I, I hit it with a literal crystal of salt. Which and, we all know, salt can be pretty sharp. Yeah. And you can also see this thing, like, cutting through the material realm into the spectral realm. As this thing just, like, gets hit from basically another dimension. And just goes flying off the ship with a, a crack as it as that rends time and space just a little bit. But there's a bit of reverberation back that hits you following the trail of the arrow because it's a conflict, so you're going to take a bit of damage. It's fine. And you're going to take four assault damage yourself. Yikes. And behind you, you just hear, hmm, figures. Because it's your ancestor. Right, it's my ancestor. Oh. Your ancestor just being like, hmm. <laughs> All right, then. They, too, seem very salty. Oh. <laughs> they are. They are, though. That's the worst part. You're correct. But the cracking of the material in Spectral Realm scares the high as balls macadrills. And... They want no more of this because they have increased impact. And so they also decide to flee the ship. So mechanically, the like bigger bravado had one box left and the ones getting high had one box left. Increased impact lets you do more damage or more effect. And so this has taken care of both groups and the mecha drills are off the ship. Uh, goodbye, don't come back, and I slam the uh, that uh, piece of steel over top of the hole. <laughs> Welding, screws, something. All right. Um, in the interest of time, shall we, maybe we can skip over the last part of the journey? Okay. okay. Just because I don't want it to take too long. We're already running late. Um, I will say, though, you, the next leg of your journey is surprisingly calm, and it's falling to night. And uh, Maka is sitting outside, and who's sitting with Maka right now? If no, if no one else will do it, I'll... I'll I mean, you can all be there if you want to. Well, yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah, okay. want to switch shifts, or are we all just... Yeah. It should be at least tiny friends. Sunset. 
<laughs> yeah. Can I can I be up in their little hammock with them? Can yeah. I like Yeah. Little and just... little And Maka says uh, Well, I feel sad because I'm gonna say goodbye soon. That's not very tough feeling sad. What what are you what are you talking about? That's super tough. You just like said it like it was. That's like a lot of people don't do that. But I thought being tough means you're never sad. You're just always brave. It's it's brave to admit you're sad. It is? Yeah. I mean like you know, if you if you just if you weren't feeling if you if you were feeling sad right now and you didn't want to say it, you'd be lying, and that's not brave. Hmm. So to be a tough wild sailor, it, you gotta feel sad sometimes. You gotta just feel whatever you're feeling, and and you know, admit it. Oh, okay. I Don't lie I, about I it. I think I get it. I think I get it. And as you're sitting looking up at the stars, like three shooting stars go by in succession. And, uh, yeah, your journey ends when you come to this very, very small spit. And it's a large piece of a fallen tall shank. And you can see all sorts of little eggs sitting on there, and they're glowing slightly. Uh, everyone, just tell me one like, add more to this scene. This is the clutch of firefly eggs. Let's start with uh, Temsin. I was going to say that they're giving off, like, slight electromagnetic pulses as well mm. so anyone who's wearing or holding any metal kind of feels like this like small gentle very gentle like nudge uh mm. whenever they get close to uh whenever they get close to the eggs cool petrichor this um it's not entirely material here there is definitely stuff going on in the spectral realm as well you can still see the swirling around the fireflies and Maka. Um, I think I think there's also like ghost stars here. There is. What like, are ghost stars? So, like extra stars. Oh, I, love, I just got making chills. their own ghost constellations. That's so good. That's so good. Hubi, what's something here? Um, hmm. I think there's something about the light here. Perhaps it's the ghost stars that we don't see, but um, Humi and Maka have some blooms that they have never seen before like a moonflower bloom or something mm -hmm. that is like, you know. And uh, yeah, one of them on whom he is like sprouted. It, there, it, the energy here is strong enough that it's actually sprouted out of the metal arm somewhat somewhere from underneath. Um, it's, it's grown up there. And that's, he's, they've never had anything grow on the metal arm since they got it, so. Ooh, like that. King Oyster? Oh, and, and Maka's is like right on the oh, top of their head. Yeah. yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, uh, I imagine just we're getting a lot of um, rustling through through the leaves and the crowns of the trees and everything like that. And uh, everything's shaking in a in a way that would um, that's that's fairly normal. Um, and it sounds like it should be chilly, but instead the the wind is very warm and like 
kind of just encompassing in a really pleasant way. Um, Maka stands up and opens up the little cage and those fireflies drift out. And as they get closer to the clutch, you can see, at least Petricor, you can see bodies starting to surround the glow of the fireflies, these like spectral ancestors, Ectus ancestors, as they move from this realm into the spectral realm. And at first only you can see it because of your, um, your, was it the ghost sight? Ghost sight. But because here the, the veil is so thin that as they reach the clutch, all of you can see it. And then Maka kind of stands up and heads to the prow of the ship and says, okay, and turns to look at you for and says, okay, I gotta be tough now. And I don't like saying goodbye, but, but it's okay to be sad. So I'm gonna go, but, but don't worry, cause we're still friends, even if I'm in the spectral realm. So, all right. Okay, I'm gonna be tough and feel sad. And then Maka jumps off the prow of the ship and before Maka can hit the waves, slips into the spectral realm. Did not realize until this moment that we were going to be saying goodbye to Maka. So now I'm sad. Uh, I would like all of you to remove any mire you have, having seen a wonder upon the wild sea. Tiny little Maka bobbing towards the spectral realm. I think there's an extra ghost star in the sky now. Sorry, I thought you guys all realized that Maka was a ghost. <laughs> I, I thought the fireflies were the ghosts. Yeah, me too. I didn't realize! <laughs> you didn't explain it to us, Petricor! <laughs> I feel like we're all there, like, crying. <laughs> like, I guess I didn't tell you. <laughs> I kind of forget that people can't see it. <laughs> I'm sadness. Uh, oh, since I haven't gotta, used it yet. Gotta be tough for Maka! <laughs> <laughs> since, since I haven't used it yet, I reach into the, a pouch on, a, on my belt and I pull out four of these kind of hammered brass uh, shot glasses. Oh. And I, uh, I pull a panel back on the arm and there's a little tap. And you can see that sap and, and liquid are being kind of pumped from me. And I just <laughs> fill each one of the of the brass uh, uh, little brass tumblers, and I, I hand them out um, to the cannonball. And I think we all clink. <laughs> the toughest of us all. <laughs> oh, I don't even know how I drink. I just <laughs> <laughs> splash. I'm not I sure how I drink it. either. <laughs> yeah, and. I'm going to give all of you a whisper. <gasps> King Oyster, you get um, sad and tough. Oh, no! <laughs> Kumi, um, you get through generations. Uh, Petricor, you get a spectral leap. I like it. And uh, attempts and you get gentle tapping. And uh, I think that's game. <sighs> wow. Was this because of Montserrat? You have to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is no, this I your just... punishment? <laughs> <laughs> this is GM on GM knife stabbing. Right? It, just, it hurts so good. That was really great, Ryan. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Oh my god. Uh, okay, we gotta wrap up because we've been going way, <laughs> way long. So, uh, Ryan, why don't you start us out? Um, remind us where we can find this game, who you are, what 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 fun stuffs up that folks should look out for. Um, yeah, so I'm Ryan. You can find me on Twitter at the one true K, and I have been officially announced as a writer on the Wild Sea. So I'm gonna be putting uh, my own mark on this. Um, I hinted at some of the stuff I'm doing in this session. Go ahead and try and figure out what it is. I'm Ghosts, also going to be sadness. working. <laughs> I'm also going to be working on like a Firefly free mode, so you can play without a Firefly. <gasps> so that is in the works. Uh, the Kickstarter is going on for another three days. We are we've hit all of the content stretch goals. The next stretch goal is putting a dent into shipping costs. But seriously, go back it. Um, we've got Wild Sea dice coming which are beautiful handmade wooden dice with the low sour script. Low, low sour is the language, the common language of the Wild Sea. And there is a script that uh, Felix has made and we're using that as the tips on the dice. And it they look beautiful. You can see previews on the Kickstarter page if you back. But yeah, go back to Kickstarter. There's a, a free um, quick start guide. Everything that we did today came from the guide except for like some creatures and stuff but everything that we did today you can do with the free rules so even if you can't afford to back go pick up the free rules have some fun in the wild sea uh yeah that's what i've been working on just three days left let's uh let's make it big i'd love to see it hit, uh break one uh, 100k yes 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 love it y'all go check it out go back it um next up we have sharon uh, hi everyone, I'm Sharon. You can find me on Twitter uh, with the handle uh, Chu underscore Baca. It's a Star Wars pun. I, I don't have any other like scheduled appearances, but just thank you guys for coming out and watching us play this amazing game. Heck heck yeah. Uh, thank you so much for playing and being uh, a sack full of spiders. <laughs> I had to like continue the bug theme. <laughs> <laughs> had to do it. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Sam. I'm Sam. You can find me at at Sam and Damiel. Not a Star Wars, but a Lord of the Rings reference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also don't have any scheduled appearances right now. But if you follow me uh, among amongst all of the the nonsense tweets, there will be updates on my schedule. And I also uh, offer tower reading. So if you want to uh, get your cards read, it's almost the end of the year. So hit me up, just DM me, we can talk about it. Awesome, totally check out Sam. They do awesome, awesome readings. And next up, Jordan. Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm at Made of Cartoons on Twitter. Um, I think I've got a fiasco game coming up next Friday. So I'll be running a fiasco game here on Fiasco Friday. Uh, apart from that, all of the, all of these fine folks were in an excellent run of heart. And I want everyone who has not seen it to go and watch it on YouTube because it's all there. Um, some uh, great role playing moments that I'm very proud of all of us uh, to have done. And uh, so and if you liked kind of the narrative stuff going on here in Wild Sea, then Heart is, um, they share a lineage for sure. So uh, yeah, that's about it for me. I can, yeah, awesome. Uh, so really quickly, uh, I'm Jess, this is my channel. Thank you so much for being here. If you haven't already hit the follow button so that we can hang out more if you watch this. Later, I clean all the videos up and put them on YouTube so you don't have to sit through the break. You don't need to sit through while we set up in the beginning. You literally come in, enjoy uh, the, the, mo the, the heat of the story as it's going on. Uh, watch this to, to learn along with us uh, how this game plays. Pick up uh, that... That free, that free guide for yourself. Don't forget to check out the Kickstarter. Like uh, Ryan mentioned, it is up for just a few more days. So please, please go check it out. Go back it. Go 
uh, see what other awesome stuff gets added to this cool, excellent, awesome adventure. Um, thank you so much, Ryan, for running this for us. Thank you for playing. This was a lot of fun. I always enjoy gaming with all of you. Heck, heck, it was so yeah. good. Yeah, thank you very much. And thanks to all the players. Thank you all for coming back for for another adventure. Thank you for thank hosting you for us. having us. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, and, and, and same goes for, for this. Uh, come hang out with us for live shows on the Twitch channel. Uh, go and hit that sub button uh, on the YouTube to see adventures like this and uh, all, all the sort of different indie games we love to spotlight here and play. And we have um, another game coming up tomorrow, so come hang out for that. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be it for us for now check out all these cool people and all they're doing um and check out this project it's it's really cool hacking game there's a few days left to back it so go pick it up uh and then play it and then and then come uh comment on this youtube video and tell us what you did in your adventure um but yeah thank you all so much i hope you all have a good rest of your day and hopefully we will see you around for more games very very soon bye all see you later thanks for watching Bye.